Hello world, good morning, namaste, and Nisan Bulavinaka from Sydney, Australia. I am Sashi Singh, your host of Sashi Singh's Talking Point. Welcome once again to the highly anticipated weekly edition of Sashi Singh's Talking Point. Well, in the words of the song sung by Glenn Frey, the heat is on, definitely. Just 10 more days, Fiji, as you go to the polls. Remember, Fiji, your vote has power. Exercise your right to vote. I have now received my postal ballot papers and voting package, and I shall be completing the voting exercise this afternoon, immediately after the programs, and shall be sending the postal ballot back to the Fiji Elections Office. DHL Express is doing a wonderful job at that. I have a very good feeling that my chosen candidate will make it to Parliament. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Fiji, let me urge you, let me urge each and every one of you who are registered, who are registered to vote, that you please turn up on Wednesday, the 14th of December, and vote for the candidate of your choice. It's a public holiday in Fiji on that day, so guess what? Get up early, go and vote early, and then just relax, Manda, for the rest of the day, and wait for the election results to come through later that evening and at night. Well, today in episode 47 of SSTP, we continue our series of interviews with the five main opposition leaders in Fiji. So far, the four previous Sundays, we have met Mr. Savinada Narumbe from the Unity Fiji Party, Mr. William Ngavoka, the leader of Sodelpa, Mr. Mahendra Chaudhary, the leader of the Fiji Labour Party, and last week we met Professor Biman Prasad from the National Federation Party. Today, we were supposed to meet the leader of the People's Alliance Party, Mr. Siti Veni Rambuka. If you have been following the campaign trail, you would have known that Mr. Rambuka has been campaigning in the north. There was the Joint People's Alliance and the NFP campaign rally in Lambasa. Then the People's Alliance leader was in Drakeni Wai on Thursday. And while the initial plan was for him to do the SSTP interview from Lambasa today, unfortunately, Mr. Rambuka, I'm told, is travelling on a ferry as we speak as he makes his way back to the mainland. They say that a team relies on all its players to be successful. Therefore, due to Mr. Rambuka's unfortunate absence from today's programme, stepping, stepping in to take his place is the deputy leader of the People's Alliance Party, Mr. Manua Kamikamitha, candidate number 454, who, as you know, you've, if you've been following this programme, has also been a former chief guest on SSTP. Today we shall discuss the People's Alliance Manifesto with Manoa, look at what the party's plans are for the first hundred days in government, and ask him about other matters that have been making the headlines in Fiji, particularly the threats, intimidation, and the race card that has raised its ugly head in these elections. Plus, of course, the partnership they have with the National Federation Party. All that and a whole lot more to discuss with our chief guest this afternoon. Let me remind you that next Sunday, that is the 11th of December 2022, we will have all five major opposition party leaders together in the one forum on Sashi Singh's Talking Point. That program will address their campaigns and allow each opposition leader a window of opportunity to give their opposition leaders address to the nation. I hope that is something you all are looking forward to as I most certainly am looking forward to that program. And I can also tell you now that SSTP is also planning to come your way live on Facebook and on YouTube on the two days leading up to the elections. That is on Monday and Tuesday, the evenings of the 12th and 13th of December, with the countdown to the actual polling day. I will be joined by the publisher of the very popular blog site and Facebook page Grubsheet, I'll be joined by Mr. Graham Davis, as well as regular columnist in the Fiji Times, renowned economist and former member of parliament in Fiji, Professor Wadhan Narsi, and our very own Nick Hill Singh. We hope you can join us on those evenings. I hope wherever you are today, you are well settled in to enjoy what promises to be a captivating, engaging, and enlightening interview in today's episode 47 with my chief guest, Mr. Manuwa Kamikamitha, the deputy leader of the People's Alliance Party. As always, 
I request that today, as we go right around the world by the powers of Facebook and YouTube, that you please share the SSTP page on your own timelines so that we may share the interview with Manuel Kamikamida with as many interested people as possible. And to ensure that you receive instant notifications for all future programs, please like the SSTP page and follow us too. Welcome to the Thinking People's Program, Sashi Singh's Talking Point, live on Facebook and on YouTube. And just before we join our chief guest, I have some good news to share with our viewers. It is due to your following. Facebook has advised us that we now have 12,000 plus followers. To all 12,000 plus of you, I say a big, big thank you, Dhanivad, and a big Vinaka Vakalevu. Thank you so much. Don't forget, all you have to do is go to the SSTP page, click on the like button, and click on the follow button, and you'll receive instant notifications of everything that we do on that page. Now, normally at this time, I would have introduced uh, Nikhil Singh to present his segment. We've changed things a little bit today to accommodate our chief guest timing-wise. Nikhil will be presenting his segment after we have spoken to our chief guest. There are some real good news items in Nikhil's segment today, so I hope you'll stay with us till the end of the program to listen to the news segment. You are watching Sashi Singh's Talking Point on Facebook and on YouTube Live. We ask the questions that Fijians all over the world want answers to. Fijians, as I say, want to know. Please like and follow the SSTP page if you have not done so. Just before we begin, an important announcement. Sashi Singh's Talking Point, SSTP, recognizes that questioning, constructive arguments and opinions are part of conversation, but posts with aggressive personal attacks, profanity, name-calling, swearing, defamatory in nature, and or threatening will be removed immediately and offenders will be blocked from being a part of the SSTP program. Let's observe these rules, play fair, and let's enjoy the program. Well, with that, it's time now to meet our chief guest on Sashi Singh's Talking Point. He really needs no introduction and has appeared on SSTP in episode 27 that was broadcast on 17 July this year. I thank him for readily accepting our invitation to come on today's program. Our chief guest today is the deputy leader of the People's Alliance Party and candidate number 454, Mr. Manua Kamikamida. And it gives me a great pleasure to welcome candidate number 454, Manua Kamikamida. Welcome to Sashi Singh's Talking Point. Good morning from Sydney. Good afternoon to you. And I believe uh, you are in the friendly north in Lambasa. Yeah, uh, Sashi, and uh, again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to appear on your program. Clearly, our leader is um, busy and uh, can't uh, make the program, so I'm uh, honored to be stepping in. Yes, correct. I'm in the friendly north. Uh, you've been, been here for a couple of days. Thank you. Wonderful to have you uh, as uh, the representative of the party on the program. It was the People's Alliance turn today. So I'm very, very happy that you've uh, come forward and you've filled that uh, particular seat. Now, uh, we've changed things around. You have a flight to catch uh, in, in a couple of hours, I believe. So we'll get straight to it to accommodate you as best as we can, uh, because you have some important messages, and I have a number of questions to ask of you. Manu, if I may begin, and I've asked this question of all our other opposition leaders that have appeared so far, and that's about the long election campaign. The general election has had a long campaign, and this has been the first time in Fiji's history where the campaign started in late April this year, I think the 26th of April, and uh, election, of course, on the 14th of December, uh, and the campaign is still going on. How would you describe the campaign period, and uh, what has been the effects of such a long campaign? Uh, I guess uh, being uh, a first time campaign, I mean, obviously, when my late father was around, I did uh, move around with him. But uh, being this uh, first campaign where I've uh, campaigned on my own, uh, it's been a humbling and uh, uh, honor, you know, it's been a real honor to actually try and move all over the countryside, move around Fiji and uh, talk about uh, the vision that uh, the People's Alliance has for our country. Uh, for a new and better Fiji, 
Uh, it's been eye-opening listening to all the issues that uh, has been raised. We have tried to incorporate them into our manifesto. Um, you know, the, you know, the the our voters are well informed, um, and uh, they want change. Uh, Sashi, so uh, clearly, um, there's uh, much to do when uh, government changes. Uh, we're up for it, um, but uh, you know, in my opinion. Uh, this government has uh, really let uh, the people of Fiji down badly. <clears throat> we'll we'll try to analyze that, and uh, also we'll take an extensive look at your manifesto today. Um, you've you've described the long campaign period. What about the electoral act? Uh, what effect has that had on campaigning? Has it placed a greater burden on how the campaign has been conducted? Last time when we met, I raised the issue of certain provisions being draconian in nature. What are your thoughts on this, Manu? Yeah, I mean, and please, uh, please, please be careful that you don't get FIC Act. All right, yeah, be yeah. very careful. <laughs> Thank you, Sashi. Thank you, Sashi. Um, you know, I'm, I will not lie. It's, uh, it's been, uh, it hasn't been easy to, to comply with the laws, uh, but, uh, you know, certainly our view has been, it is what it is. Uh, we have worked, have worked very hard to comply uh, with the laws, uh, and as you know, uh, we're still un under investigation from FICAC uh, regarding the Rock the Vote initiative. Um, uh, you know, certain aspects of the law are uh, unclear, um, and uh, you know, we the interpretations are made by the election officials as we go along. Uh, you know, the vote buying uh, debate that we had is a classic example of that. Um, uh, you know, so, um, you know, there, there has been challenges. Um, you know, I'm aware that uh, Mr. Dan Lobendan was uh, uh, was being uh, approached uh, by FICAC uh, uh, last Friday um, to for an interview. And also one of our regional youth uh, presidents was uh, has been asked to answer some questions. Uh, they will find nothing, Shashi. Um, we have uh, fully cooperated so far, uh, and as a party, I'm uh, very confident uh, that we have not uh, breached any laws. Um, you know, just very briefly, another law that's uh, uh, you know that uh, came up was this uh, Financial Management uh, Act uh, uh, law. You know, to um, to uh, make uh, parties um, um, you know provide uh, you know a, full, a funded manifesto. Um, uh, that's been, uh, you know, challenging. You know, you know, the, the fundamental question, Sashi, is um, how can you know the opposition parties opine or make uh, as uh, you know sort of solid assumptions on government expenditure and revenue when there is absolutely no uh, uh, visibility? Um, they have not provided the details on the expenditures or the costs. Um, so, you know, we just assume that whatever was provided in the budget is correct. Um, I may suggest that it may not be correct. Um, so, uh, Sashi, you know, again, uh, that's been uh, challenging. So, um, you know, but uh, we're not concerned, uh, Sashi. I mean, uh, we have provided a manifesto, uh, uh, but we know that uh, come election day, um, you know, the people will make uh, the final decision. Um, uh, you know, and clearly, uh, when we form government, uh, as part of the review of laws, uh, we will certainly have a look at the electoral uh, laws and, um, you know, whatever appears draconian, as you mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. will, will be removed. Uh, we need, uh, you know, we need uh, laws that are practical and, uh, you know, can be complied with. Uh, not, you know, in, you, know, in, uh, you know, right now there are some genuine challenges with uh, complying with the laws. You see, in any democratic country, there's got to be a level playing field. And it's got to be equal to all political parties. Now, whilst you've expressed uh, reservations, let me just say, Fiji has to just hold its breath for 10 more days. Because when the country goes to the polling booths next Wednesday, the 14th of December, then that's the final arbiter at the end of the day. And uh, it's the people who will make a determination which government, which candidates lead them for the next uh, four years. So that is something that uh, I guess Fiji and diaspora all over the world 
will be looking forward to. Now, as I said, uh, I'm mindful of the fact you have a flight to catch today. You're in Lombasa. I'm now going to move our discussions towards the People's Alliance Manifesto and the message that it delivers to the people of Fiji. Now, in your party leader's message on the first page of that manifesto, it says right at the outset that the People's Manifesto has been developed based on the theme Rebuilding Fiji Together and Unleashing Our Potential. Please explain this theme. Yeah, th thank you, Sashi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, um, uh, from the outset, um, one of the fundamental failures of, of uh, this regime has been its uh, refusal or inability uh, to genuinely uh, collaborate uh, and consult with uh, all stakeholders uh, on uh, anything of importance. Uh, it appears that uh, Ayaz wants to be in control, uh, and uh, you know the uh, prime minister supports that. Um, you know the whole country lives under a climate of fear, Sashi, um, and the ability to speak up and provide bold uh, criticism. Um, is virtually non-existent. If you say something that's not to their liking, uh, you will uh, get approached, or something will happen. Um, national forums, you know, you know, reflecting on the past, Sashi, uh, national forums such as the Fiji uh, Institute of Accountants Congress uh, mm. and Topics uh, used to provide real uh, constructive inputs into the development of our country. Um, I have not seen a communique from either forum uh, since this government uh, uh, took over. Uh, and, you know, uh, sometimes the, the communiques have been quite um, uh, critical, eh? uh, but, you know, constructively critical. And uh, actually, those discussions used to be fun uh, when we had them. Um, uh, you know, the private sector is scared, the unions are marginalized. The NGOs are being targeted, and we all know that uh, the government only honors those who are aligned to them. Um, the People's Alliance and the NFP government will, will change that, um, and we'll encourage open in, uh, consultation and collaboration. Um, forums such as the National Economic Summit and the Tripartite Forum will be brought back, uh, and uh, honest uh, feedback will be much welcome. Uh, hence the the theme of a uh, manifesto, Sashi. Uh, you know, rebuilding Fiji together, uh, and obviously unleashing its potential. That's very powerful. Unleashing one's potential. I mean, in in a spirit of uh, uh, sort of shutting people out, you don't realize what potential is lost. And when you speak of the uh, uh, climate of fear then you're just uh, shutting people away from being proactive uh, for the sake of the country, for the betterment of the country. Now, I've also read in the um, opening statement of your leader in your manifesto, uh, and it reads that for the last many years, our country has been trapped and paralyzed both politically and economically. Just a short uh, description from you as to what, what the leader is trying to say. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, fairly obvious, Sashi. The political paralysis comes about because of the way this country is run. Um, one person runs the show, uh, and that's the Attorney General. Uh, the Prime Minister allows it. Um, uh, because one person runs the show, even the way the economy is run, uh, is run by one person. Um, mm. You know, what, what has been the result? Uh, we relied too much on tourism. Uh, and when COVID hit, uh, we paid the price. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there was not even uh, talk of uh, diversification. Um, you know, the, so, uh, yeah, the, um, you know, the, that whole way of running a country needs to change, Ashi. And, uh, you know, I'm very confident that the uh, People's Alliance uh, with NFP government uh, will bring in those uh, changes. All right, then what then is your vision for Fiji? What do you promise to deliver to the people of Fiji? You've mentioned some of those things, but I've just framed that as a question, so please go ahead. Thank you, Sashi. Um, the, you know, I think our, our party vision sums it up best. Um, 
you know, we really want to establish a united and prosperous and happy nation uh, that is resilient uh, and uh, thrives in a, in a vibrant economy. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, by that we mean, uh, you know, we hope to deliver a Fiji that has a genuine democracy, uh, where the rule of law, governance uh, is safeguarded, freedom of speech is safeguarded, free press is safeguarded, uh, and other norms that we uh, uh, hold dear. Um, you know, that's the kind of Fiji that uh, we would like to, together with the people of Fiji, um, build Sashi. Yeah, I've read that manifesto, uh, and uh, your leader's message uh, also states that the party appreciates the idea of uh, pluralism, as you said, freedom of expression, openness, and peaceful competition, and that these qualities are irreconcilable. And I, and I really love that, because uh, it really clearly spells out a message. Now, Manoa, I understand that your party's new policy framework is called Let Love Shine. Now, how do you inculcate the doctrine of love in the governance of the country? Yeah, sure, Sashi. Thank you. Um, and the, um, you know, the, the, you know, the idea behind the Let Love Shine uh, framework is, uh, is really to be governing with uh, compassion and equity uh, and fairness, Sashi. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's fundamental. Uh, there's myriad examples where this government has just, uh, you know, the, done things just, uh, they are just, uh, you know, uh, lack compassion. You know, you know the, the recent, um, you know, case in Veraisi, uh, where 48 people has got their houses removed, uh, when the country is still recovering from COVID. Uh, yes. uh, you know, surely, you know, a compassionate government would have said, let's hold off. Let's try and find locations for these for where these people can go, um, and then you know the, at the right time when the economy is recovered, uh, you know uh, allow that to run through. Um, but uh, Sashi, uh, that doesn't mean you uh, we're going to be soft. Um, we're going to make firm decisions where we need to make changes. Uh, they will be made, um, and uh, you know the you know the love is. Obviously, uh, a doctrine, but uh, certainly, you know, if we need to make uh, firm decisions, those will be made. Uh, we, you know, we, uh, it does not mean that we will uh, shy away from uh, a tough love aspect. Well said. And let me also then mention this to you that here on SSTP, I'll keep you guys on your toes if you do form the government. I, I will be asking you the tough questions because you've made a pledge to the people of Fiji that we will bring about a change for the better of the country. And uh, as I said, I'll keep you on your toes uh, with my SSTP program. So that's something to look forward to, Manua. Now, yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah? Yes, sorry, Sashi. I mean, uh, you know, the, you know, thanks for mentioning that. You know, we, you know, part of uh, being a good government is being, uh, you know, allowing yourself to be put in positions where you get questioned or challenged eh? uh, yes. and if, any, if anything uh, if government is genuine uh, it will allow uh, you know the um, you know the uh, the flourishing of better ideas or better ways of doing things um, uh, you know you, you can take it from me uh, if you call me for a show when we're in government you won't get the call me five weeks from now uh, we will certainly uh, Run up and uh, try and um, you know uh, be honest and uh, you know tell the people of Fiji what's happening. Uh, you know clearly, Musashi. You know we all know there is a mess in government at the moment, uh, yes. and we will take the country through it and uh, show them what we're doing, um, so that uh, you know the people actually can participate in the rebuilding of our country. Wonderfully said. Uh, let me make a statement here and uh, there's a number of people a number of viewers of SSTP who regularly question me as to why I have not included the Fiji First Party in the SSTP platform let me tell you for the umpteenth time that I have extended an invitation to the Attorney General of Fiji I have extended an invitation to the Prime Minister through his office I have 
copies of all correspondence that I have sent by email, and I have to this day not had the courtesy of a reply. So the choice, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, the Fiji First people not to come on this program is entirely their choice. It's their prerogative, and I cannot do anything about that. If they are prepared to come, like Manoa has today, to come and face the hard questions, I'll be happy to interview them. But until such time they accept, I can't do anything about it. So it's not my loss. If they don't want to come on the, on this platform, it's not my loss. Manu, let's move on. The manifesto says, to foster a transparent and an accountable government, to nurture freedom-loving society where growth and development agenda reigns supreme. Your manifesto has outlined key initiatives to be implemented by the People's Alliance government in the first 100 days in office. Now, let me take you through some of these initiatives, please. As you know, many people have been critical of the one-man or two-man rule of the Fiji First Government. How will you base your government, and on what basis will key decisions be reached? Thank you, Sashi. I mean, the, you know, the, you know, the key pillars, if you like, or the, the fundamental uh, uh, basis on which... Uh, uh, you know, the People's Alliance government will make uh, decisions in the new Fiji, will uh, basically be consultation um, and consensus. Um, and the cabinet will be the ultimate body that makes uh, decisions um, uh, before they are sent to parliament for, for uh, being made into law or if there's uh, decisions that need to be made. Um, you know, that's how good democracies work, Sashi. Uh, there is collective responsibility in cabinet. Uh, the two Cs the moment, you've mentioned. Uh, yeah, the two Cs yes, you've mentioned. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, consultation, consensus. And that has been something yes. that has been missing uh, for so many years in terms of Fiji's, exactly. uh, go Fiji's governance. Correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh, you, know, the, you know, that has been clearly missing and... Uh, you know, sadly, Sashi, you know, a lot of our youths have not uh, seen how a proper democracy can work. Um, and I am praying and hope that uh, we can do that uh, come 14th of December. Now, you've mentioned the two C's. Why is it important for your party to adopt and promote a participatory and inclusive policymaking initiative, including holding a national economic summit during the first 100 days in office. Thank you. Thank you, Sashi. I mean, the, the key to unlocking Fiji's potential, uh, you know, uh, from the People's Alliance perspective is, uh, you know, working together as a people, eh? uh, collaborating uh, and coming up with ideas. You know, like, you, like we had just shared, uh, um, this has never happened under this regime. Uh, most of the time, it's either my way or the highway. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you a classic example, um, um, uh, Sashi. Uh, the only time I heard uh, Fiji First actually talk properly about diversification of the economy was after COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, I was just looking at a uh, news article uh, on the 29th of November from the Reserve Bank Governor. It's quite interesting, Sashi. Uh, this is what he says. Ahead. One of the lessons of COVID was the need to diversify the economy and reduce dependency on tourism. But mm -hmm. this cannot be done in the short term. 16 years, <laughs> Sashi. 16 years. And, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, the, the, you know, I'm sure the governor has been telling, uh, you, know, the, you know, the government of the day, hey, you, you know, since before COVID, uh, you can't blame him. Um, and so here is an admission that, um, you, know, um, you know, government has never listened. Um, you know, everyone was telling Kuyum, you know, there's records of Biman and Narumbe saying, uh, you know, diversify, diversify. Our party leader said diversify, diversify when he was on the other side in South Delta. Uh, did not listen. Um, the other thing to, I, I just wanted to share to Sashi is, uh, you know, the historical records show that um, 
the um, the Fijian economy was actually in decline. It was actually going down uh, prior to COVID. Uh, yes. It was under distress. Um, COVID actually saved uh, this government some major embarrassment. Uh, um, so uh, you know, Sashi, you know the, um, you know, to your question, uh, you know the, you know, it's important that uh, you know we consult uh, widely. Um, and you know, the National Economic Summit will only be the start uh, of uh, that process. Uh, also, something I wanted to clear up, Sashi. Uh, you know, the National Economic Summit won't be just driven by a private sector. Uh, it will be an all-encompassing, uh, you know, consultation forum. Uh, so we will have a private sector. Uh, the unions will be represented. Uh, NGOs will be represented. Civil society will be represented. Uh, I was even thinking even the religious organization should be represented. Uh, so that we develop a holistic uh, approach in, uh, you know, um, rebuilding our, our, our Fiji. Yeah? So uh, that's kind of, you know, where we're coming from, Sashi. Very well thought out initiatives. Uh, and as I said, in 10 or 12 days time, we'll know whether you get to carry that out. Manoa, your People's Alliance Manifesto states that if you do form government, there are several very important tasks that your government will undertake. Now, let me dissect these with you today, please. Let us firstly look at the functions of Parliament. As you know, uh, the previous government used Standing Order 51 to pass legislation in a system that did not really allow time for consultation, time for scrutiny, etc. What is going to be your plan in terms of uh, reviewing Standing Order 51? Thank you, Sashi. I mean, uh, this clearly needs to be reviewed and changed, uh, Sashi. Um, I liken it to uh, enacting laws like making pancakes mm -hmm. uh, very fast, eh? uh, with no consultation. Um, and uh, you know, the you know, the, from my perspective, um, any of the laws that uh, went through Parliament, like. Uh, through Bill uh, Standing Order 51, like uh, Bill 17, 17 or Act 22, um, mm -hmm. these will be tossed out immediately because uh, they, you know, it, it, um, they have not been developed in the right way. All right. Now, talking about tossing out things, I've also heard that uh, the remuneration and allowances for all parliamentarians is also something that uh, your government will uh, will address. What plans do you have in this regard? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sashi. Um, you know, the person, from my perspective, Sashi, um, the prime minister, all the ministers, and even the assistant ministers, they are actually overpaid. Uh, that's taking it taking it from me, from a commercial perspective. Uh, you. When you come into office, you are dealing with public money. You are dealing Absolutely. with money for the taxpayers. So mm -hmm. the salary that you take will not be a commercial level salary or a, a private sector level salary. You will get a salary that is commensurate to service, Sashi. Um, and that is the fundamental difference. Um, you know, Biman suggested... Uh, cutting all the allowances and the salaries by one third. Eh? I saw him mm -hmm. say that in some yes. forum. Uh, that's a good start, a starting point. Uh, maybe it might be a bit lower. Uh, we'll have to have a look. Uh, but, uh, you know, things like uh, the Prime Minister's 3,000-day uh, allowance um, that uh, for travel, over, uh, you know, overnight travel, uh, mm -hmm. particularly when he's offshore, uh, that will uh, be removed. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, we 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 are serious in our plans to look at uh, you know the remuneration of uh, uh, the parliamentarians, particularly the ministers, um, and then re look at all the allowances and make uh, appropriate uh, cuts. Uh, such. Wonderful. It does, um, and, it, and it does uh, send out a great signal to to the rest of Fiji eh, that these guys are are serious about uh, service. Uh, actually service before self, not uh, service to mm -hmm. fill your pocket, uh, which with you know, private sector salaries, 
you only come to that conclusion. Eh? Um, you know, no one in government should be getting private sector salaries or benchmarked as a private sector salary. It's a totally different ballgame. Yeah. Yes, I certainly remember that uh, when uh, when the current prime minister came in, I believe, and I stand to be corrected, his uh, uh, salary at that stage was somewhere around seventy odd odd, odd thousand dollars. And then all of a sudden it went up to about 200 and something thousand dollars. And uh, then with allowances of about 40 plus thousand dollars, and I'll cover this in my program on Monday, the 12th of uh, December. Um, now, you know, he's, he's got a salary package of 300 odd plus thousand dollars, I believe. And as you said, the traveling allowance, I remember when I was working for uh, FBC in those days, and if we traveled overseas to attend a broadcasting course, the choice was ours, whether we collected a per diem, and out of that per diem, you had to pay for your hotel, your travel expenses, your meals, etc. Here we have a $3,000 payout per day, and on top of that, you've got hotels and meals and everything else provided. It just belies belief, you know. Let's yeah. move on. And, uh, um, you know, and just, you know, not, not to labor the point, but, uh, you know, certainly when, uh, when you're offshore, Sometimes your meals get paid for, or you know, uh, yes. you know, in a, in a normal allowance environment, you will send back the money that uh, uh, you know that you uh, have not used. Um, interesting to do an audit, Sashi, and see whether that's been the case in terms <laughs> of uh, these allowances. Yeah. Well, well, I if there's a change in government, and if the government does not go back and give the auditor general back his powers to carry out audits of all facets of government life, then I wouldn't like a change of government, if you know what I mean. The Auditor yes. General must be given back his powers to, to do his job. Manuel, let me yes. ask you something else here. I, I remember when Dr. Neil Sharma crossed the floor during a vote in Parliament, there was hell to pay. Now, are there any plans for voting in Parliament if your party gets in to allow people to use their conscience, to vote, using their conscience, to vote uh, according to what uh, uh, their supporters want, etc. Will you allow that in Parliament, to let uh, parliamentarians exercise a choice? Yeah. Thank you, Sashi. You know, like, um, I look at it a bit differently. Eh? The, um, hmm. You know, if a caucus is operating well, um, you, know, you know, issues and concerns that uh, other parliamentarians have, will be raised and you know a, a good caucus will address them uh, so when you enter parliament you're all on the same page eh? now there'll be occasions where uh, you know where you know you uh, you know you know the leader might say yeah vote on your conscience uh, but those will be uh, rare um, sure. and so um, you know the you know, I think if a if a if a government is uh, genuine when, when it consults, if it collaborates um, and listens, um, you know the you know this the voting on conscience will uh, be a rarity, uh, or um, you know will uh, you know you know will not be an issue. Eh? Um, so uh, yeah, the, the, again, you know the. You know, it's it's uh, you know we you know we respect everybody's right to you know, to uh, freedom of speech, to expression. Uh, but, you know, a well-run caucus uh, should be able to, uh, you know, sort of uh, manage those uh, uh, tricky issues. Yeah. Are there any other changes you see as necessary in the functions of parliament? Yeah, I have one uh, pet uh, bug that I wanted to share. And that's just uh, voting by acclamation, uh, Sashi. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, that yes. is not that is definitely not acceptable in any democracy. Um, I know they use the Zoom over the over the you know COVID period, which is probably you know, understandable. Uh, but you know um, you know in the past, in past governments, so you know before um, uh, Fiji first came in, uh, you know you you were allowed to call for a division if you wanted uh, the vote recorded. Uh, you know that yes. it, in, you you need to show the people of Fiji what you're actually doing there, 
uh, and how are you voting? Uh, because it certainly talks to your values. It talks to how you think as a government. Um, and, um, you know, uh, at the moment, it's just not treated seriously. Um, you know, one of the things, Sashi, that I keep on thinking is this government has been in for too long. It's starting to take uh, the people of Fiji for granted. This is a classic example. They don't care what the people of Fiji want to know. Um, and so, yeah. Um, Come December 14th, Sashi, uh, change is coming. Well, time will tell. Mm. All right, uh, have a sip of water, have a little break. Uh, I'll come back to you in just a second. You are watching Sashi Singh's Talking Point and in episode 47 today, our chief guest is Mr. Manua Kamikamiva, the deputy leader of the People's Alliance Party and candidate number 454. Please like and share today's broadcast if you can. And I would like to thank all those people who have sent their stars and those who have been active posting comments and emojis as well. Trust you are enjoying the program. Nina Moreno, thank you very much for the stars. Uh, and I wanted to thank you as well last week. So thank you. Keep those stars coming and your, and your likes and your heart emojis. All right, Manu, we're back with you. Um, the executive arm has been discussed in close quarters, and there are some who believe that under the current government, certain parts of the executive arm have been compromised. What will the People's Alliance do in the first 100 days in government to ensure the separation of powers to maintain the independence and impartiality of the office? Thank you, Sashi. You know, um, you know I think Fiji's, uh, the people of Fiji know that uh, there is so much to do in this particular space. Uh, you know, this government, uh, uh, if you want to grade them, uh, is a big fail, Sashi, when it comes to uh, uh, this particular area. Um, uh, I'll, I'll show you an example, which I, I challenged the Attorney General on, and, on, and uh, this just brings to bear the importance of independence. Eh? Um, you know, the current Attorney General, as we know, is also Minister for Elections, uh, he's Minister for Anti-Corruption, or FICAC, uh, and he's General Secretary of the Fiji First Party. Um, there are serious conflict of interest, Sashi, when, when he holds those positions. Everybody sees it. Um, I called for him to relinquish some of those positions, uh, or those portfolios, eh? uh, and even asked the Prime Minister to, to do it. Uh, they did not care. Um, they don't feel they're accountable to anybody. Uh, and uh, Sashi, uh, you know, this kind of uh, conduct needs to stop it. Eh? Um, there was never a minister uh, for elections in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. The elections office used to sit under the prime minister's office as an assigned portfolio. Uh, and the, the prime minister merely facilitated their needs, which was budgetary uh, issues and human resource capacity issues. Um, the Prime Minister was never allowed to interfere with the running of the Supervisor of Elections Office. Um, and we really need to return to those norms, Sashi, um, you know, uh, where we have genuine independence of institutions. Um, you know, the, the same is, uh, you know, you mentioned the Attorney General uh, as being independent. You know, I, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, his contract was not renewed because he was certainly shaking the tree. Um, and, uh, you know, the uh, our chief statistician, uh, Mr. Kemuel Nengama, released yes. a report that in anybody, in any government's eyes, you would welcome and say, hey, there's a problem. We need to fix it. Right. What do they do? Yes. They fire him. Um, yes. So, yes, uh, there is a dire need to fix this area. Trust me, Sashi, we will fix this area as quickly as we can. Uh, there's so much to fix, but, you know, this is one of the areas that um, that are important. And like, you know, um, you know, when uh, when you're talking about economic recovery, investor confidence, all these kind of things, you know, uh, having independent bodies is fundamental uh, because it uh, gives investors confidence that, uh, you know, the wheels of government uh, running properly. Okay, now uh, 
Your manifesto states that your government will review the laws and provisions for appointments to ensure the independence of bodies, and you've mentioned, like the Electoral Commission, Constitutional Officers uh, Commission, etc. And I'll talk about FICAC in a while. Now, why will it be important to review such bodies? What do you hope to achieve? Yeah, I mean, uh, Sashi, I think, uh, you know, like, I, like I've just been explaining, eh? um, you know, in a, in a genuine democracy, uh, independence of certain government bodies is fundamental, uh, non-negotiable. Uh, you can't play around with it. Uh, because when you do, uh, you know, you, you, the whole um, construct of government starts being compromised. Um, and sadly, I have to say, uh, under this government, um, they have not been following these, uh, uh, you know, these fundamental norms. Um, so, uh, yeah, they will need to be reviewed and, uh, and changed. Now, one particular topic that has been raised in the lead up to the elections, and you mentioned this at the outset of uh, the program, is the climate of fear that exists in Fiji. Now, if you look at the fourth estate, the media organizations and journalists, most of them are afraid to report on any number of subjects. Now, the ordinary citizen also is afraid to express themselves for fear that someone will take them to task. Now, human rights have been undermined together with an individual's right to protest in Fiji. What does the People's Alliance intend to do in the first 100 days to correct this scourge in Fiji society? Yeah, you know, um, you know from, uh, from the People's Alliance perspective, uh, you know, all these... Um, uh, you know, whatever rules and laws that uh, currently undermine uh, freedom of expression, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, the press, freedom of assembly, um, all of these, uh, any, any law that uh, uh, gets in the way of uh, these fundamental freedoms uh, will be changed. Um, uh, we cannot, um, um, you know, sort of... Uh, allow these to continue it's uh, it's just fundamental uh, again it's part of uh, building a, a government that uh, you know is based on good governance uh, uh, and it's very important viewers I'd, I'd love you to share this broadcast because what you hear coming out from mr manoa coming from either's mouth these are gems of wisdom that uh, we haven't heard uh, coming from politicians or want to be politicians in Fiji for a very long, long time. People have just been subdued. People have uh, just more or less been shut out from expressing their views. Um, Manuel, well, well done. I mean, let me just read a comment. And the reason I, I've asked people to share this is I'm loving what you are saying. Uh, Nitya Reddy has written, Manoa exudes integrity, competence, and vision. There's nobody in Fiji First who comes even remotely close to him. Mr. Reddy, thanks for that comment. Uh, Manoa, keep on speaking what you are. Now, I note in your manifesto that uh, you've said, the People's Alliance have said, that there'll be a review of all current public holidays. What is the intention here? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. I mean, uh... You know, our leader has been on record saying that uh, he wants to bring back Ratuskuna Day uh, and uh, Girmit Day, uh, you know, to to really pay homage to, uh, you know, the second largest uh, group of uh, 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 that uh, exists in Fiji. And, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, play a fundamental role in our society. Uh, you know, and obviously what we need to do is uh, take some out. Uh, there's one that comes to mind, Shashi, uh, uh, you know, Constitution Day. Yeah, which why Constitution? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, why are we mm. celebrating Constitution Day? Um, uh, you know, this uh, Constitution was hoisted or forced on the people of Fiji. Uh, uh, and it's beyond me why any government would uh, would want to celebrate it. Um you know, you know the, the the one that actually had genuine consultation, uh, which was uh, you know by, through Professor Yashkai, 
they burnt it. They burnt uh, it yes. And you did a lot of work and, uh, you know, tried to come up with a all-encompassing approach. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, clearly what we have to do is just look at the holidays and uh, remove the ones we think are no longer appropriate for, you know, the times we live in. Uh, off the top of my head, Sashi, uh, Constitution Day certainly is at the top of that list uh, <laughs> and will be removed immediately uh, and will re replace it with uh, with one of the two holidays. That's something for Cabinet to decide. Uh, you know, you know, I don't need to talk about Ratu Sukuna. You know, the, the vision behind Ratu Sukuna, um, you know, he set the platform for the economic development of Fiji. Um, and I mean, let, let's face it. I mean, he was an elder statesman. He yeah. was a, a military man. He was a leader. Correct. And uh, yeah. uh, when, when, I, when I look at honoring Ratu Sukuna Day, that is mm. part of our history. I mean, yeah. people growing up now must look back in history and recognize who such people were. And yes. to remove them altogether from history is uh, shocking. Yeah, keep going. And, I mean, again, and, you know, again, Sashi, you know, um, dictatorships, uh, a big part of dictatorships is uh, revisionist history, right? You try Absolutely. and mm. uh, you try and form history to suit your own uh, vi uh, version of history, if you like. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Ratsukuna is without peer, in my view, uh, in in Fijian life. Eh? He he really was uh, set the ground, you know, for what Fiji is today uh, and its economy. <laughs> and, uh, he, you know, he was, a, was visionary in that respect. Well said. Now, what does the People's Alliance intend to do with regards to travel bans and uh, declarations of prohibited immigrants? Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you, Sashi. I mean, naturally... All of these will come under review, eh? uh, and if they're not justified in law, uh, they will be removed uh, immediately. Uh, you know, the inability for Dr. Padmalao to come to Fiji to uh, bring home uh, Dr. Bijlao's uh, ashes—it's uh, 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 it's heartless. It's ridiculous. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the Professor Alualia ban. Um, is another example. It's just uh, it's not right. It's not acceptable. And um, you know, those are the ones that come immediately to mind, Sashi. Uh, you know, and there's possibly lots of others. And uh, you know, we need to fix this. Uh, um, you know, the the Fiji we know uh, is not a Fiji where people are you know sort of uh, victimized and uh, in persecuted and you know. Um, you know, uh, aff accorded basic decency. Uh, you know, in, in the case of the Dr. Pad um, you know, it's just uh, uh, flabbergasting is the word that comes to mind. It's just, uh, uh, it's just hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. It's it's heartless, as you say, heartless, absolutely yeah. heartless. The man passed away, one of uh, Fiji's greatest ever historians. Uh, yes. whose work whose work is there for all to see and uh, his wife is then stopped from bringing his ashes to take it to Tambia for the final rites and uh, I'm glad that uh, you've mentioned that today because that brings that little bit of hope to the people that uh, an incoming government will have regards to basic fundamental human rights now that is very very important now, uh, Manoa, I understand that under your party's doctrine of love, there's a plan for the formation of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Now, first question, what purpose will this commission serve? Secondly, how will this be set up? And who will determine the terms of reference for this commission? Yeah, thank you, uh, Sashi. Another... Uh, you know, the, you know, there's a view uh, amongst the party and, uh, you know, certainly our leader that, uh, you know, to truly bring about healing uh, in our country, uh, we need to talk openly about 1987, uh, 2000 and 2006. Mm -hmm. um, and the thinking is that uh, we need a commission to 
to allow these uh, discussions to happen. Eh? Um, yes. You know, I know I know that uh, the South Africans uh, adopted a similar commission, and it was chaired by uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu, Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu. Eh? And and maybe we can start there in terms of looking at how that uh, is set up as a point of reference. Eh? Uh, you know, the mechanics, Sashi. You know, um, I mean. You know, this government's going to be all about consultation. You know, there are a lot of experts in uh, in trauma and reconciliation in Fiji that I know of. Um, and this is an area where, you know, we can uh, we can bring them in and, uh, you know, discuss how we, you know, government doesn't know how to do it, uh, clearly. Uh, but, you know, we will consult widely and, uh, and come up with a, with a genuine uh, commission eh, that really tries to reach into the heart of the problem that was created by 87, 2000, and uh, 2006, and try and uh, bring about healing in our country. And, uh, you know, wouldn't that be uh, a lovely thing to see? Well, you know, without a healing process, one cannot uh, go past uh, pains and trauma of the past. One has yeah. to address those things. And uh, I know personally, uh, a friend who's actually watching uh, in, in Auckland. In Auckland, he stood up and he spoke in front of Mr. Rambuka. And uh, he spoke of his pain and his suffering. But then he also spoke of forgiving Mr. Rambuka at that particular meeting in Auckland. And uh, my friend is watching today's program. And that's the sort of forgiveness one needs to move ahead in life. You just cannot have all these bitter things ingrained inside you and uh, because you know you'll rot uh, and it's not good for the mental psyche so you know I, I support your truth and reconciliation commission in that it will address all the ills of the past and hopefully bring the country into better light so well done now another topic um, despite so many promises by the Fiji first government to bring back local government elections, nothing has happened so far. And it just seems that the government had some sort of a fear or phobia to let people have their own local government representatives like we always did in the past. What are your party's plans for the resumption of local government elections? Thank you, Sashi. You know, the, you know for this uh, Fiji First Government, it's all about control. Uh, and anything where you devolve power, or you know you delegate power downwards they really have a genuine time and hard time dealing with it because um, they want control they don't want to release control um, and you know uh, i don't know what it is actually but uh, you know you know when you when you delegate or when you allow people to manage their own lives and you know uh, operate uh, as they see fit uh, in their own localities it's an empowering thing uh, you know, the whole society benefits uh, from it. Um, you know, but uh, again, um, this government is all about control. Uh, and so it's not going to happen ever under their, their regime. Um, for us, uh, Sashi, uh, local government elections will return as soon as possible. Um, uh, from recollection, I think we're giving ourselves a 12-month time frame um, to make that happen. Um, but um, you know the uh, you know it's clearly very high on uh, the list of priorities. Um, you can see how uh, you know because you know people are being brought in Sashi to ad hocly manage the town councils. Uh, you can really see for some town councils how how the proper functioning of town councils has actually started to deteriorate. Eh? Um, yes, and so. You know, putting power in the hands of the people that pay the rates, and you know, uh, they will do make sure they you know that a good job's done. Eh? Um, and so, you know, the you know, yeah, it's a it's a it's a priority for people's life. That priority is noted, and a twelve-month time frame, I think, is good enough to uh, resurrect the town and city council elections. Let's face it. Um, for example, people in Lautoka they want their own representatives where the representatives know what's needed in Lotoka, what uh, needs to be prioritized, how are mm -hmm. they going to get it? And, uh, and then the ratepayers 
form part of that consultation. They attend meetings, etc. And uh, it's localized. And I remember my dad used to be a counselor in Lotoka. He was a mayor in Lotoka. And uh, in those days, town and city councils were quite robust. They were doing their own things uh, at that local level. And uh, you know, those were good days. And I'm glad you've thought of bringing that back. Now, yeah. Manuel, one of the, as you are aware, I call it one of the craziest and brain-dead policies that the current government brought about these elections was the requirement for women to use maiden names for registration purposes for these elections. I mean, I don't know whose brain dead idea that was. That was absolutely ridiculous. Surely you're not going to continue with that uh, if you get into power. Yeah, absolutely not, uh, Sashi. That's one of the first things that's gonna, like Bill 17 or Act 22, it's gonna mm -hmm. go flying out the window in the first uh, 100 days of being in office. Eh? Uh, we will remove it. Um, it's just, uh, you know, the, actually, Sashi, just to give you some context very quickly, eh? Um, sure. You know, Nico Nawaikula won his case. They tried to, this government tried to challenge him on his name. His name, his real name is not Nico Nawaikula. It's something else. Yes. yes. Uh, and they tried to test it in court. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, Nico won. Um, and um, what did they do? Uh, they changed the laws and said everybody has to revert to their birth certificate. Um, and you know, unfortunately, uh, probably they didn't realize it. Um, the women of Fiji were in fact impacted. So um, uh, um, you know, I hope that all women go to the polls and vote them out because uh, you know we'll certainly do something about it. I just thought I'd uh, make a small plug in here as well about some of the other things actually we are doing about women, uh, if, if I may, just very quickly. Please uh, go ahead. The, the uh, uh, People's Alliance um, is, uh, you know, is going to, um, you know, really look at, uh, you know, the the whole issues around, uh, the, uh, you know, discrimination in the workplace, sexual harassment. Uh, we've put put aside uh, quite a bit of funding uh, to deal with that. Um, you know, we're actually talking about, uh, you know, uh, a representation of women in Parliament, uh, trying to see whether we can codify some of this. Eh? Uh, also on boards, uh, you know, just to, uh, you know, we keep on saying, oh, women need to be well represented, uh, but, you know, you and I know Sashi, uh, mm. it's a male, male dominated society, right? So yep, uh, yep. We, we, we need to to bring in these things. Um, you know, we, we've got money set aside for, you know, women who want to engage in small business, uh, MSMEs uh, together with the youth. Uh, that's also a large priority. So, you know, there are things that we're thinking of doing to to keep on, you um, know, sort of uh, uh, addressing the needs of women in this country. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to to the policymakers. And uh, if you do get into government, uh, you know, your programs, as you've highlighted in your manifesto, speaks very well of changes that is going to benefit the entire country. And as yes. I said, uh, thumbs up to you and uh, your party's policymakers. Let me now uh, turn my attention to the judiciary. What plans does your party have for the judiciary um, in terms of uh, perhaps restructuring the judiciary? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. Uh, you know, we, we mean what we say in the manifesto. Uh, you know, we need to broaden out the the countries that we get our judges from, uh, for starters, um, if it's a cost issue. Um, you know, I know in certain other countries, uh, we approach donors um, to actually, you know, the, uh, you know, one of our police commissioners was here on uh, donor funding um, back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and using our Vu Vale uh, contact and support to, to help us out. Um, yeah, obviously, the review and uh, restructure of the judiciary uh, will need to be looked at. Uh, you know, the you know, in a good democracy, Sashi, you know, uh, strong functioning judiciary, uh, you know, uh, obviously gives confidence, eh? um, and uh, you know the, you know, that's certainly um, you know a priority for the People's Alliance. 
All right. Now, let me at this stage raise the subject of the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption, FICAC. And please, again, I warn you, be careful what you say. I don't want them knocking on your door. Um, I wouldn't want that. Now, some of the opposition party leaders that I have interviewed on SSTP have expressed a view that FICAC should go. Some have suggested that FICAC should be restructured. What plans does the People's Alliance have for FICAC in their first 100 days in government? Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you, Sashi. I mean, uh, I think our manifesto talks about phasing them out, Sashi. Uh, uh, and, you know, the, the, the position is quite simple. Eh? Um, you know, the, the police actually had an anti-corruption unit or has had an anti-corruption unit for a long time. Uh, and this government created a separate body uh, reporting to the Attorney General uh, directly, um, which needs to be looked at as well. Eh? Um, so, uh, you know, the... Um, you know, that's one one particular issue. The other one, I think, um, you know, I was just having a look at the the budgetary allocations for FICEC. Uh This year, it's uh, 10 million. Um, and uh, it's been uh, 7 million uh, for the last two years. Uh, so, uh, you know, the in a, in a small country, Sashi, you know, duplication of effort, duplication of functions. We need to, we're not a... Australia, we're not a um, New Zealand, we're not a uh, America, right? Uh, we need to be practical when we roll out uh, things. Uh, we can't create castles for certain people uh, just because they think it's necessary. We need to be practical and pragmatic and put resources where they're necessary. Um, and that's certainly how, uh, you know, we're not we're not afraid of uh, investi uh, corruption investigations, I think. I think some I think Fiji first said, "Oh, they're they're scared of um, of uh, you know being investigated." Uh, you know, that's certainly not the motivation. Eh? The motivation is very simple. Uh, you know, uh, be practical. Uh, look at uh, current functionalities. The police already has functions. If we enhance those functions, uh, you know, uh, you know that may well be the answer. So uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, the, the policy or our approach is Sashi um, to, um, to phase it out. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's interesting you mentioned Australia here in New South Wales, for that matter. We have the Independent uh, Commission Against Corruption, ICAC. Now, yeah. ICAC have, in fact, been instrumental in very successfully prosecuting corrupt officials, including parliamentarians, some of whom are still serving jail sentences. Now, FICAC would have served wonderfully well if they uh, went after corruption, but somehow it seems that it's become a political tool. That's my opinion, that it's become a political tool to go after politicians for the sake of some other politicians. Let's leave FICAC there. I've uh, now understood that uh, under your government, they'll be phased out. Um, and the other side of the coin, as you said, the Fiji police force had a unit which actually looked uh, after corruption. So perhaps if the police are given back the powers that they once had and uh, under the same budgetary allocations, that perhaps end up you know, having that job and then giving prosecutions to the DPP. There you yeah. go. You've got it set and, up. Uh, you know, and also, you know, to the to the idea of uh, independence right? and uh, conflict of interest, Sashi. Uh, hmm. Right yeah. now, the the Attorney General actually uh, is in charge of the anti-corruption unit, right? Uh, yes. In in our model, um, the police reports to the Defence Minister. Uh, so any risk of uh, of uh, an interference, let's say, is a hypothetical, uh, is significantly reduced. Um, and, uh, you know, as we discussed, Sashi, uh, you know, good governance, separation of powers, uh, the ability to, to place functions in certain, um, deploy functions in certain ways to make them independent, more independent and more transparent, uh, that is all good for the country. All right. Now, your manifesto also states that uh, 
once you form government in the first 100 days, your party will reconvene the Commission of the Prerogative of Mercy to consider applications for mercy from correctional facilities. Why is this such a top priority? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. I mean, uh, you know, we believe the Commission hasn't sat for a while. Uh, you know, and all prisoners that, um, that deserve to be heard by that Commission uh, should be heard, uh, you know. Uh, we believe in uh, restorative justice. Eh? Uh, you know, if you've uh, paid and uh, did your time, uh, you uh, you know you have done your time. Um, you know, we need to you know sort of find ways of bringing them back into society. Um, uh, you know, the you know that's certainly the view of the party. All right. Let me now address some critical issues that surround the ETOK affairs. The United Nations uh, Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People establishes a framework of minimum standards for the survival, dignity, and well-being of the Indigenous people of the world, and it elaborates on existing human rights standards and fundamental freedoms as they apply to the specific situation of the Indigenous people. Manu, my question to you is, do you think the Fiji First Government embrace the UN Declaration on the Rights of Our Indigenous People, the Ito case? Uh, absolutely not and definitely not, uh, Sashi. Uh, you know, one of the key tenets of, uh, tenets of uh, the UN DRIP, eh? uh, mm -hmm. uh, Nikon, Mr. Uh, Honorable Niko Nawaikula mentioned it, this a lot, a lot and uh, uh, our party leader mentioned it as well. It uh, said something like this. Uh, nothing without uh, about nothing about us without us, Sashi. Um, and, nothing about you know, us without us. Correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, we need to be consulted eh? uh, on on matters uh, regarding uh, indigenous issues. Um, so take a pick, Sashi. Abolishing the GCC, no consultation. Yes. Uh, creation of the land bank to rival uh, TLTB, no consultation. Um, uh, Bill 17, no consultation. Um, the list goes on, Sashi. Um, you know, there's, you know, from where the People's Alliance sit, um, this needs to change. Um, you know, uh, you know, we will ratify the uh, the UN declaration, of course. Uh, but beyond that, uh, uh, we need to to look at the laws closely um, and fix them. So these uh, changes that have been brought about, so they, I would be correct, I assume, in saying that they have marginalized Ethiopia rights. Would that be correct? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And yeah. so, you know, your government is going to work in its first 100 days to review these laws that have marginalized the Ethiopia rights, correct? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Uh, you know, I'll just I'll just give I'll just give you a quick example, Sashi. Uh, uh, Bill seventeen, how it came about. It eh? um, yeah. obviously there was no consultation when this bill was enacted. Uh, before it was enacted, uh, you know, things that happened that uh, probably the public are not aware of is a certain minister got sacked by opposing uh, Bill seventeen. Um, a board member of the ITLTB or the uh, the board, the Itauke Trust Board, got removed for questioning Bill 17. Um, uh, senior members of uh, a certain provincial council uh, got fired uh, for trying to solicit uh, support against Bill 17. Um, from the West, uh, there were over 30,000 signatures uh, requesting that um, you know the you know the uh, bill 17 be at the very least uh, withheld from enactment um, and uh, consultation take place eh? but uh, that never happened i mean that's that's a marginalization of the highest order there sashi um, and that is so unfortunate so sad to see it happening where blatant action has been taken i take my hat off to that uh, you, you mentioned a parliament, rather a minister. Uh, uh, the lady minister that you're talking about, I take my hat off to her, that she wasn't bullied into making a statement as she was required. And, uh, you know, as I said, 
much respect to that to that lady, and uh, you and I are not mentioning names today. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm, Tashi, I mean, uh, and that's only one example, right? You know, that's only one example. Uh, we we've actually listed about uh, thirty-seven laws that actually have this these kind of issues. Uh, you know, you know, uh, you know. I'll I'll just stay, keep it there, but you know the. The extent of the marginalization is very, very serious. It needs to be addressed. Yeah. All right. Now, there is also a common call amongst a number of opposition leaders that I have interviewed on SSTP to reinstate the Great Council of Chiefs. Your party wants to do this in the first 100 days of government. Can you please tell me what role would you like to see the GCC play? Now, would it be a consultative role or... Would they be given powers to make decisions? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. I mean, uh, you know, firstly, just me, let me preface my comments by saying that uh, I am a commoner, uh, so I have to be careful about uh, opining on the GCC uh, mm -hmm. in specific terms because, uh, as we all know, it might be considered uh, via via level or disrespectful. Eh? Uh, well, you're what a, you I say you're a commoner. <laughs> Manawa, you say you're a commoner. I'm a Kandia. And for me, to talk about, for me to talk about the GCC, I always am very mindful of the respect that I've got to give yes. to that august yes. body. And that goes yes. without saying. Please go ahead. <laughs> have we lost you? I hope not. Uh, uh, Internet is, uh, seems to have just frozen up for a moment. Um, you're Sorry, watching you, Sashi Singh. You, you, yeah, I got lost back you again. I, I, I'm, I'm still on Sashi. Yes, you are. You are. You're back again. You you just froze for a brief moment. You're back again. So we were talking about the Great Council of Chiefs. Uh, Hello. What role would they play? You're on, Manua. You're okay. You can talk to me. Can you hear me? Just give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you can hear me. Yes, we've got some internet problems from uh, the Lombasa end. Uh, uh, let Manwa come back. Uh, uh, gives me an opportunity of thanking people. Uh, there's a number of people who've posted their uh, likes and their uh, heart emojis. Thank you very much. Thanks for being part of this uh, program. And uh, those of you who have sent stars, I thank you as well. We'll uh, try and have this connection with uh, Mr. Kamikamida with Manuel very, very soon. He's back on there. Let's uh, get him on. Uh, let's. Uh... All right, you're back again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, sorry, Sashi lost connection somehow there. Apologies. Yeah. That's okay. No, no, no need to apologize. I'm happy I've got you back. So we were talking about the Great Council of Chiefs. Please continue. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like I said, uh, you know, commoner, I uh, have to be respectful, can't be the available, of course. Uh, you know, but uh, obviously the reintroduction uh, will be rolled out. Um, you know, the you know, you know, the consultative uh, aspect of the uh, GCC, uh, you know, that can happen immediately. Um, and so, you know, you know, there's so many issues, uh, Sashi, that uh, can be discussed. Eh? It's critical for. Uh, the Tauke people, uh, and so you know the, the consultative uh, aspect of it. I'm sure that can get rolled out uh, in terms of the legal aspects uh, and uh, the power there. Um, that will need uh, discussion uh, amongst uh, government and the chiefs as well. Eh? Um, clearly, because you know we have a constitution that uh, does not recognize uh, that aspect of uh, uh, previous powers. Eh? Yeah. All right. Now, another subject is the, um, excuse me, as I said, another subject is the Solini Asana, uh, something that the People's Alliance have discussed in the manifesto. Now, the Solini Asana, as we know, is a levy that every Ethoke male pays annually. Now, I note that uh, some have questioned that contribution. What is the People's Alliance plan for the Solini Asana and how will the funds be replaced? Yeah, you know the Sashi. It's it's in a it's um, uh, you know the uh, you know it's um, the way I explain it to to friends is 
that okay, are the only people that are asked to get, uh, get taxed twice, if you like. Uh, right. You know, we are paying VAT, we are paying income tax, we are paying CGT and everything else. Mm -hmm. And then we are expected to uh, contribute to the Solinia Sana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't make sense, right? Uh, so it needs to go away. The government needs to find the funding. We've found the funding through our, uh, you know, manifesto through budgetary allocations. And, uh, you know, we've had uh, to increase some taxes. But, um, you know, the... That's you know that's a from us that's a you know it's a it's a nice way of uh, contributing to the Toke. You know we know as Toke you know we have challenges. You know the social aspect of our lives. You know the, you know helping family. You know uh, the church obligations. Uh, and then you have the Solnia Sana. Uh, we can at least remove one of those imperati uh, imperatives eh? uh, in a logical constructive way. So uh, I hope the people of Fiji will appreciate uh, where we're coming from. The good thing is, Sashi, um, you know, if if the Yasanas or the Tikinas or the villagers then want to say, hey, let's uh, do a soli one year to, you know, uh, create a company that can do all sorts of things like, you know, uh, you know, the initiatives for export or that kind of thing, then that can happen. Eh? Um, as opposed to just funding the provincial office, which in my view is the responsibility of any government. Okay. Let me now address with you two matters of great importance to Fiji. Um, one is the public finance and the need to invigorate the economy. Now, the People's Alliance have stated that they will strive to consolidate the government finances through sound management of government revenue and expenditures, to allow the flow of capital to finance debt servicing, operating expenditures, and capital investments. Manawa, how would you describe the Fiji First Government's management of public monies? First question. Yeah, again, uh, Sashi, you know, the, um, I consider this a big fail on their part. Eh? Um, you, know, you, know, the, um, you know, the examples are, are there to see. Uh, you know, wastage is a is a major issue for, for Fiji at the moment. Eh? Um, you know, we put the estimates at around about 400 to 500 million. Uh, Biman Prasad and Savina Rumbe have also been talking about um, half a billion uh, similar estimates. Uh, you know, you know, there's a myriads of examples of wastage. Eh? Um, uh, you know, the Lautoka swimming pool uh, started in 2015, cost uh, 2.5 million. Uh, now uh, move fast forward to 2022, costing 12.5 million, uh, not completed yet, Sashi. Uh, the Water Authority digger case, um, you know, fi uh, I think it was a 15 month uh, lease contract. Um, 33, million. 33, 33 million. 33 million. 33 million. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've talked, I've waxed lyrical about the uh, Prime Minister's allowances, so I won't go there uh, again. Uh, but I think uh, on top of that, Sashi, um, is, uh, you know, like the Prime Minister says, oh, we are the least corrupt government uh, in, in Fiji, eh? or the, as, as Fiji is ever known. You know, the first thing uh, the public of Fiji should ask is the Lautoka swimming pool saga and the water authority saga. Why hasn't FICAC investigated it, first, firstly? And because it's been a long time. Why hasn't uh, people? Why haven't people been uh, taken to task uh, on that? Um, that's one. Uh, the other one, Sashi, that I wanted to put in a plug on was um, I've got the act here. It's called uh, Act Thirty Five of I don't know whether you can see it. Act Thirty Five of Two Thousand and Twenty One. Right? Yeah, we can see the act. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what government did here was they looked at capital gains tax. Um, uh, for sale of sh uh, disposal of shares, mm -hmm. uh, and what they actually said in the amendment was this: um, uh, the disposal of shares held by persons before first of May 2011, and uh, any any shares eh, held that they disposed, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, if the person has not paid capital gains tax, um, they are no longer required to pay capital gains. Mm. 
Wow. Um, the the question I want to ask, and I, Sashi, I, I mentioned it on two shows already, and I'm going to mm -hmm. mention it again today. Yes. Ayaz needs to come clean on what this actually means for the people of Fiji. Uh, who this amendment benefited, one. And secondly, and more importantly, how much was foregone in terms of tax through this amendment? Um, uh, you know, the Prime Minister is very proud of his uh, government being not corrupt. Uh, maybe the Prime Minister himself can go and ask his uh, Minister of Economy and uh, tell the people of Fiji what's happening. Uh, but, um, you know, you know, these questions actually um, run contrary to the proud assertions of our uh, Prime Minister that, you know, the, the, you know, that, uh, you know, in terms of uh, questionable transactions, they are pretty good. Um, you know, the, these three examples, um, you know, um, actually um, uh, say differently. All right. Uh... Let us face some very harsh realities of life. Fiji is currently living in a vicious cycle of debt. The government debt is uh, reaching around 90% of GDP. The debt level is unsustainable. Now, if in government, what will the People's Alliance do to reduce the country's debt burden? And what time frame do you give yourselves to bring debt to a manageable level? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Sashi. You know, the, um, I think uh, you know. I think it's important for the country to understand that the, the debt issue and uh, bringing the debt issue down to manageable levels, it's a, a medium to long term challenge. Eh? Uh, uh, and there's a reason why I say that. Um, you know, for example, uh, this government they've ignored water issues. Uh, there are major issues with water. Um, sewerage, uh, health infrastructure. Um, these need to be fixed. And what are we going to do, Sashi? We're going to borrow more. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the challenge, therefore, is, uh, or the strategy from our side, uh, there's about three items that we want to look at uh, very seriously. One, I've mentioned already, wastage and corruption, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let's go after it. Let's try and, you know, if, I'll be so happy if at the end uh, of our first 100 days, we can come to the people of Fiji and say there's like 400 to 500 million in genuine savings that we can make for you. Um, that would be a great start. One, it will slow down the acceleration of the debt session, right? Yes. Because yes. um, that will then go into other years. Uh, the second thing... Um, which is what the um, Reserve Bank governor mentioned earlier, uh, increasing the cake, right? Or diversifying the economy. Uh, you know, the Reserve Bank governor um, basically te te is telling us, uh, if Fiji first didn't do it for 16 years, in a roundabout way, he didn't specifically say, but by saying um, we only learned it after COVID, he's <laughs> saying exactly that. Um, yes. And on this basis alone, Sashi, in my opinion, uh, the inability of this government to genuinely diversify the economy, they do not deserve uh, four years in office, another four years. Um, obviously, the third uh, item, Sashi, um, we, you know, we do it. I, you know, I, I come from a banking field. We do it all the time. Eh? Uh, debt restructure, uh, looking at uh, the obligations. Um, uh, you know, the Attorney General says, uh, don't worry, we've done all we can. Trust me, uh, there's always more to do when it comes to debt restructure when another person looks at it. Uh, so, um, you know, the, that, that's another area that we'll need to do to look at. Uh, and that's just to try and uh, delay uh, the repayments, Sashi. Uh, we will still have to pay the debt at some point. But, you know, by, do, by de delaying the, the repayments or defraying the obligations uh, we can you know concentrate on you know pushing hard to to grow the cake so that uh, you know the economy starts thriving um, uh, and, and so you know my hope is between uh, five to eight years you know we can bring down debt to GDP uh, to mm -hmm. around 50 percent or lower uh, wow. if we can do that uh, that would be that would be great eh? um, you know the 
you know, that will depend on a lot of dynamics and uh, you know, a lot of the things that the country does. But, uh, you know, again, you know, the, the great thing about this Ashi is this current government has never consulted properly with the people of Fiji. There are so many great minds in this country, Sashi, that have excellent ideas on how to grow this economy. This government yes. doesn't want to hear about it. Uh, so that gives me the greatest confidence out of these three. The growing the cake is uh, excites me, Sashi, because I I know I've got uh, you know uh, colleagues and people out there that really can do you know leverage things and can do some great things for the Fijian economy. You know, when you talk about uh, having a national economic summit, and as you've just said, uh, there are some great minds in Fiji, no doubt about that. Um, academics, uh, people, leaders in business, uh, leaders in uh, economics. My God, if you brought all of these people together as a think tank, uh, you know, that's a great starting place. I mean, each one of us, we are... Uh, knowledgeable in our own area of uh, expertise. We're not knowledgeable and we don't know everything, despite uh, someone knowing everything and holding so many different titles. Most of us only excel at what we know. But by tapping into resources from other facets of the community, that is where the brain just comes in, into that think tank. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're raising these issues because it's important that Fiji gets back to that. Now, talking yeah. about uh, minimizing our debt burden, um, I understand that the People's Alliance government has plans to reform the taxation system and to improve the tax collection process. A lot of money there in the collection of taxes. What are your plans in this regard? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. I mean, uh, you know, the, there's a clear need to just to review the uh, you know, taxation in Fiji. Um, but, uh, you know, as I've said in the past, it cannot be done in isolation. Eh? Uh, mm -hmm. It needs to form a major part of the economic summit. Um, you know, my colleagues, uh, a lot of my colleagues in, and peers in the national, the uh, Fiji Institute of Accountants have a lot of excellent ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have been adopted, some are not. Um, and so, you know, uh, you know, a great start would be the economic summit. Thereafter, there's uh, something called the Fiscal Review Committee uh, that can really do a deep dive into our tax structure um, and then have a look at uh, what is in the best interest of Fiji. Um, you know, depending on who you talk to, there's uh, some, you know, there's suggestion that we need to simplify the tax code uh, and make it easier. Um, I won't go into the details of what that may mean, but certainly, you know, the outcome that the government of the day will want to have is, uh, you know, uh, um, an easier way to manage tax, um, uh, less compliance uh, impositions, uh, which is at the moment at its highest. Um, and, uh, you know, then, you know, the, you know, if we're able to then raise taxes as a result of it or, or increase revenue as a result of uh, looking at uh, these measures, uh, that would also be an uh, excellent uh, outcome. And uh, so, yeah, from, uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, you know, the consultation is key, Shashi, uh, in this uh, process. Um, and like you correctly pointed out, we, you know, some of our, you know, some of the people out there already have answers. Eh? We just have to consult with them uh, and then bring it all together and, and develop a, a very good uh, framework. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, as you are aware, any, inco any incoming government will totally be unaware of the real state of affairs of the Treasury when it comes to finances. However, I note that uh, the People's Alliance have pledged that in the first 100 days of a People's Alliance government, you have plans to present a mini budget. What is the thought process here? What do you yeah, thank you, do? thank you, Sashi. It's, it's, it's very simple, actually. Um, you know, it's something that uh, you know all incoming governments will do uh, for starters. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, the, the our priorities, you know, manifesto, Sashi, will not be aligned to what the current budget is. Um, so what we have to do is, uh, you know, because we can't uh, just 
uh, wait till the new budget uh, allocations and then start uh, delivering on what we uh, have undertaken. Eh? Um, uh, we can actually look at the initial uh, places where government has spent money. We can look at uh, where there's money unspent and then where we can deploy you know, you know, the bulk of our initiatives, we will start doing them this year. Yeah, we won't wait right. till that's kind of the the real um, you know the real sort of uh, motivation. Eh? Um, um, you know, many budgets happen, Shashi, when uh, a new government comes in, or you know, if there's dislocations in the economy that require a revision of your uh, the way you um, you know you're spending your money and uh, earning your money. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the, the rationale behind that. Yeah. Okay. Now, Manoa, you've uh, mentioned wastage a couple of times already today, um, and that's one of the topics that has come up in the election campaign. That any incoming government will review wastage. Um, can you, perhaps, very briefly, uh, touch on any of the current wastage of the current government? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Sashi. Yeah, I mean, uh, just very quickly. Um, the you know we talked about the prime minister's uh, salaries and the ministerial salaries uh leasing of vehicles sashi um government is spending 30 million per annum on leasing vehicles apparently in pre governments before this government the total like capital expenditure uh, for vehicles was two to three million or let's say five million uh, and now we've exploded it to you know to 30 million that needs to be reviewed uh, our, our approach is to again look at it and start uh, phasing it out um, uh, we need to do a deep dive into all the capital grants uh, that are being outlaid eh? uh, mm -hmm. Fiji Road is a pet uh, subject of mine um, you know there have been some very big allocations to Fiji Roads Authority um, uh, you know, you know, some uh, suggestions are that we can save a hundred million uh, or even up to two hundred million mm -hmm. uh, if we have the right uh, uh, people in place. So that's another uh, big area. Um, the embassies, Sashi, uh, need to be looked at. Uh, you know, which embassies are not adding value to Fiji? Uh, we know that uh, Washington was closed. We know that PNG was closed. Um, for the life of me, in terms of PNG and Washington, these are key partners both in the Pacific and globally. Um, um, and uh, you know, we have um, you know sort of uh, embassies elsewhere that probably uh, mm. we can't see really the material benefit of having those. So again, that's another area. Um, you know the. You know the Pacific Islands Forum, Fiji. You know the Frank actually set up the PIDF to actually rival uh, the Pacific Islands. Forum. Pacific, yeah, yeah, and it's still here. Uh, why is it still here? You know he's uh, gone straight back into uh, PIFs now, and uh, you know he's uh, engaging there. Uh, we need to look at that. I think it's about five million a year, a year just uh, keeping that organ going. I think uh, Sashi. So you know these are the type of areas that we look at. Uh, you know, there's, you know, our, our leaders committed to a real a big audit of some of these areas, and uh, you know, um, you know, we should uh, be able to report to Fiji on uh, on some substantial savings. All right. Now, it has been stated in your manifesto that uh, poor <coughs> management of the economy and inconsistent policies have been the hallmark of the Fiji First government and that these inconsistencies have damaged the economy significantly, <coughs> which caused many of the non-tourism sectors to diminish. You've touched on that a little today. Would you like to expand on this a little bit more? Where and how did they fail? I mean, you mentioned at the beginning the over-reliance on tourism. Yeah, th thank you, Sashi. I'll, I'll mention a couple here. Um, please, please you know, do. Um, uh, you know, I've been engaging with one of the founders of the tuna industry, uh, and he tells me that uh, uh, the tuna industry is under severe pressure from uh, overfishing. Um, 
too many licenses have been issued. Uh, licenses licenses have been issued, um, and uh, you know it's it's created a lot of pressure on the industry um, uh, right now. Uh, that industry used to be uh, you know flourishing in the past. Um, you know, it, it's not uh, any longer. Um, dairy industry, that's a favorite for me, Sashi, because I was a mm. board member of Rio Dairy at some point. Um, yes. Actually, it was, a, from my perspective, it was one of the best boards that I served on in terms of learning a lot about uh, good governance and issues like that. Eh? But, um, you know, in, uh, in uh, the 2000s, uh, up to around about 2003, 4, 5, uh, when I was still a board member, uh, you know, the the milk production was uh, around 10 to 12 million liters of uh, milk a year. Mm -hmm. um, the CEO at the time, Shashi, uh, uh, told us, uh, because we asked him to do the exercise, that uh, import replacement potential for Fiji, Shashi, was 80 million liters a year. Right? That's, eight, this is 80. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, in terms of uh, potential import replacement opportunity, yeah? Um, um, that was the uh, Ratu Savage in Loli. Um, uh, right now, Sashi, uh, the milk production is four to five million liters a year. We have mm -hmm. gone back. And then, not only that, Sashi, um, this government uh, um, um, restructured the industry and made CJ Patel run the factory mm -hmm. yes. uh, and offered it duty concessions, uh, which I think just came off this year. Uh, the idea, when when we used to run those concessions, actually the idea was that we'd plow back those con concessions or benefits back into farm production or milk mm -hmm. production uh, to benefit the farmers. Um, that will be another interesting audit, Tashi, when, uh, when uh, government changes, because uh, uh, it is a tragedy. Uh, mahogany potential. Mm. Um, that's another, you know, uh, Ratumara created that, uh, that uh, industry, you know, let's say 30, 40 years ago. Uh, and, you know, when you talk to those who are passionate about that industry, they felt that this is one of the industries that could really do a lot in terms of the economy, um, would actually empower the native landowners to start uh, getting involved uh, but it's been a disaster um, you know the you know the, uh, I, I know of this because I had when I came back to Fiji actually I had some involvement uh, mm -hmm. in um, uh, in a company that was uh, owned by landowners um, you know we uh, when we when I got in uh, we started talking about the need to certify uh, the mahogany forest. Uh, the reason is uh, there is a large market for decking in New Zealand uh, that can be tapped into. It's quite a significant market. Um, up till now, as far as I'm aware, uh, I can I might be might stand corrected, Sashi. That certification still has not happened. Uh, I came in 2019, uh, and they were talking about it from 2017, I think, or 18. Uh, again, you know, uh, lost opportunity. What, another thing, Sashi, uh, this is something that the Attorney General probably hasn't come clean on. Uh, mm -hmm. There is uh, uh, proof out there that um, uh, he, um, you know, the, the film rebates, he offered too much in terms of fil film rebates. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, now the government is trying, frantically trying to pay it back. Uh, they are very harsh, harsh on that. Uh, the implications for that, Shashi, it actually might destroy the film industry in Fiji because we will now uh, be looked at differently by film operators, right. potentially. Um, and then, you know, the good old sugar reforms. Eh? Uh, why hasn't government, uh, you know, made serious headway into reforming the industry? You know, I mean, uh, you know, it, you know the the amount of subsidies that are given to the sugar industry are quite significant. I think uh, you know 50 million a year uh, in some some years. You know, just imagine, Sashi, if uh, 
a good government would actually go in, be serious, have a look properly, restructure the industry, and all of a sudden they discover, oh, the subsidy because of inefficiencies and new technology and uh, all that kind of stuff, um, the subsidy reduces uh, to say 25 million a year. Um, so, you know, the, these are the kind of opportunities that await this country, but uh, they await this country for a new government session because uh, the, these guys uh, can't see what we're seeing. Yeah. Manawa, I mean, hearing you speak, it just tells me it's, it's a common sense approach as to how you would revitalize the Fijian economy. I yes. mean, look, that example you gave, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, did you say that we're spending 30 million, is it, or, or how many million dollars in leasing transport? 30 million, 30, three zero. I mean, you could you could buy each department two or three motor vehicles, and uh, that would not even cost that much of money. You could engage a driver for all each one of those vehicles, and you'd still save money. So you know, this is something what FICAG should be doing. This yeah. is what should be examined. This is where people should look at the nuts and bolts and find out why such decisions have taken place when you could do things cheaper. Yeah, Am I wrong indeed. in saying that? Yeah, no, no, you're correct, Sashi. And, uh, you know, it's something that I didn't mention, but, uh, you know, um, looking at carpooling, you know, amongst the ministries, looking at uh, more efficient use of, uh, of uh, resources, you know, if you, you know, there's, there's a good uh, argument that, let's say, if you centralize uh, transport pooling, uh, you may well find that, you know, I don't know, like 200 cars, you probably need 150, right? Um, yes, well. Yeah, so these are the kind of things that need to be looked at, eh? yeah. Manu, I'm very mindful of the time. I, I know uh, you have a flight to catch from Lombasa, so I'll move on and uh, just keep uh, an eye for the time for me, please. Uh, public service, let us now look at the public service. Now, in the days of true parliamentary democracy, where we had clear demarcation lines of the functions of the legislature, the administration, and the judiciary. I remember a permanent secretary of a government department ran his department without fear, without control, and with total confidence, so much so that I've known some permanent secretaries to even stand and fight uh, ministers, their line ministers. That's how things used to operate. Sadly, under the Fiji First Government, we know that the public service has been politicized to such an extent that today it is grossly inefficient and ineffective as public servants exist in a, a climate of fear, gross fear and insecurity. Manuel, there seems to be an urgent need to change the mindset of the public servants. With what urgency and what plans will a People's Alliance government bring about much needed changes in the public sector? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. Thank you, Sashi. I mean, the you know, the civil service uh, reform is uh, very high on the list of priorities eh, for uh, People's Alliance uh, and obviously NFP as well. Um, in terms of uh, uh, you know some of the things that we can do immediately, um, hopefully we can do it in the first week. Um, you know, remove contracts for civil servants. Uh, go back to appointment by tenure, um, retirement age, moving it back to to 60. Um, I'm pretty sure it can be done in the first 100 days. Uh, so those are the types of things. Eh? In terms of the actual reform, um, uh, you know, that probably will need a bit more work. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the great things about our candidates, we have a subject matter expert, uh, Mr. Professor Chad, who's uh, standing for us. Uh, so he will uh, be an excellent uh, guide in terms of uh, what we need to do, how we uh, plot a new path in terms of reform of the civil service, uh, you know, given the damage that the government has caused to the civil service. Um, you know, it needs a, a whole lot of uh, institutional strengthening uh, and uh, support. Eh? Um, um, yeah. They need, so, uh, they, need, they, they need that confidence back. 
They yeah. they need uh, they they need a pat on the shoulder. They need to be encouraged. They need yeah. to bring back the smiles on the faces of civil servants, that they no longer work in a climate of fear. Where exactly. and, and that is where the best performance comes out when you have that. But please repeat, you will uh, change the retirement age to sixty for a start. Yeah, the, that that's going to be changed. Yeah, to sixty. Correct. That's very good news. That is good news indeed. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you do form government, 60s is a start. And later on, you can review that uh, for, you know, 65, etc. I mean, some, uh, the, the, there are experts who say that as we grow older, the best years of our lives, the best years of service uh, is still remaining. And if you retire at 55, you know, it's like putting somebody out to pasture and making them brain dead. That's the unfortunate yeah. part. Uh, Manawa, Fiji's health and medical services are in a dire strait. And even blind Freddie can see that uh, the broken down facilities, the falling infrastructure, just about everything needs urgent and drastic action. Now, this must be a top priority for any incoming government. What plans will your incoming government have to ensure the community of adequate care and preventive healthcare services. Yeah, yeah thank you, Sashi. Uh, part of our budgetary allocations, um, uh, you know, there's a there's a great deal of focus on uh, on healthcare and medical services. Um, you know, the uh, you know one thing we keep on hearing is the lack of uh, drugs, uh, medication, um, to the point where you know it's not unusual for people to be told to go and buy their drugs. Uh, when going to hospital, um, so that that the, we provided some allocations there uh, to address that. Uh, the the bigger issue, such is um, the state of our hospitals uh, themselves. Eh? Uh, I don't need to talk at length in that. You know, we only need to walk through Suva Hospital to see what we see, um, and clearly. What it does is, and again, you know, you know, we might talk about uh, the debt increasing. We need to have a, a capital plan on how we're going to spend money in terms of the health sector and in terms of the hospitals. That is where we have to start. Um, whether it's 20 million a year or 50 million a year or whatever the number is, uh, but we need to start building a program to renew or rebuild hospitals if we need to. Uh, and more importantly, after that, Shashi, which is something I know this government doesn't do, uh, repetitive maintenance uh, and you know having program maintenance, that is key. Because uh, otherwise things uh, run down very quickly uh, and then you virtually are forced uh, to spend again eh, to, to get it up to, to scratch. I've heard your party leaders say PWD will come back and Oh, Lord, don't we need PWD? Because I remember in those good days, um, hospitals, PWD would be there, fixing yeah. a broken door, fixing a broken window, putting a yeah. coat of paint. Um, yeah. You drive by the CWM hospital and you look at, I mean, it, it just looks so sad. And yeah. um, one of my guests also, I think it was Professor Biman, who said that they would, oper they would approach uh, overseas uh, organizations which could contribute financially uh, to Fiji getting new infrastructures put uh, put up and uh, that is you know that is to be sourced and that mm -hmm. doesn't cost us money so yeah. uh, I, I'm glad that uh, you and the party are thinking along those lines I know I have a sip of water you've been talking for quite a while I'll give you a wee break you are watching such a things talking point of <laughs> my chief guest today is Mr. Manua Kamikamiva the Deputy Party Leader of the People's Alliance Party and candidate number 454 in the general elections. If you have recently joined us uh, on SSTP or this is the first time that you are watching this program, let me tell you that you can catch up on all the past programs from episode 1 to episode 46 last week by visiting the SSTP page on Facebook and on YouTube. You can access all the past programs. Manua, in this next segment, I'd like to get your responses to some utterances made in public by the Fiji First Party. Let me begin with this one. 
The Fiji First leader, Bani Marama, has raised a question in a party rally in Raki Raki on who needs the Great Council of Chiefs and what will it bring back to Fiji. He says that some parties are talking about the Great Council of Chiefs because they won the Ethoke votes. But no one missed the GCC, he said. How do you react to such a statement? Yeah, you know, Sashi, uh, it's been almost like comical watching, um, you know, the Prime Minister of Fiji and also Kayum make uh, utterances, uh, you know, all over the countryside uh, for the last couple of weeks. Eh? Uh, and, you know, before I address your question, I think they really reflect um, the conduct of uh, two despots or two dictators who are arrogant, uh, tired, uh, uh, have been around for too long, uh, have run out of ideas, uh, out of touch, and have reduced themselves to just uh, hurling insults at everyone and uh, hoping that they stick. Um, mm. I have news for both of them. The people of Fiji are fed up and will show their utter disgust come 14th December 2022. Uh, with regard to the GCC, Shashi, um, mm. you know, the, the desire to bring back the GCC on the campaign trail, uh, it's been overwhelming. Um, uh, I have not, to be honest with you, I am very honest with this, I have not heard to date any toke on the campaign trail say, don't bring back the GCC. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I'm talking grassroots here, Sashi. Uh, Fine. Uh, they have said, bring it back. Uh, so, you know, Prime Minister's out of touch. Um, well, he's going to hell, isn't he? Just allow me to add on. Yeah. yeah, go on, please go on. Just to add on a few other things. Uh, this is, a, I just wanted to share with the people of Fiji the real truth why mm -hmm. Frank doesn't want to bring in the GCC. He doesn't want the GCC to come in because he knows he won't be able to control the GCC. It's about control for Frank. He controls the ITLTB uh, or the Native Land Trust Board. He controls the provincial councils. Uh, he cannot stomach having a body that will counsel him and will be revered by the Toke. Um, you know, there are so many national issues, Sashi, that, uh, you know, Toke as a people need to start discussing. Eh? Uh, poverty is one major one. You know, thanks to to Frank and I ask, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the report by Nangama states that 75% uh, of all uh, poor Fijians are actually Toke. Um, yes. uh, you know, the drug problem in this country, that's another issue that the GCC would probably want to discuss. NCDs in this country, Sashi, is another issue that's really impacting Tauke men at the moment. Uh, so, um, you know, from honestly, from a Tauke perspective, you know, Frank's uh, utterances on the GCC are embarrassing and they're arrogant. Um, you know, to use uh, Tauke words, Ndokotoka, Vie Vie Levo. Vie Vie Levo, okay. Well, move on. The Fiji First Party General Secretary, Aya Sayed Kayum, while speaking at a rally in Tavoa last week, said it will be treacherous and a cowardly act if someone stands up and says they want to vote for the National Federation Party or the Fiji Labour Party. He said that it will be treacherous if people who have received equal rights do not vote for the Fiji first. Now, what do you say to that comment by Kayum? And isn't the right to vote an individual's choice as to how he or she exercises that choice? Yeah, Sashi, it's a, what a fuss, eh? What a fuss. Um, you know, this is even shameful for someone who boasts uh, his intellectual capacity, uh, like Kayum. Uh, he should be encouraging everybody to vote. Um, again, you know, uh, Ayaz is desperate um, and uh, he genuinely believes he, he thinks he's done a, a, a great job. Uh, he's been scared to front up on, uh, on you know, some talk shows like Straight Talk. We had a, a discussion 
um, on Tuesday uh, to talk about the economy and account for himself. Um, you know, it's a, it, it's embarrassing actually to hear, you know, people like Ayaz, um, you know, talk about these kind of things when, uh, uh, you know, he should be encouraging every Fijian to vote and uh, grade them for their performance. All right. Well, uh, you said he didn't turn up for a particular program where you participated. They haven't turned up to my program for well over a year, and they know why. Um, move on. Barney Marama at a rally in Syria Park uh, in Osori said uh, in the Etho K language that the conversation about returning Etho K land can cause stabbing, murder, and blood spilt on our land and unlawful entering a property will happen if that conversation is condoned. My Lord, I mean, do you think the Fiji First Party is getting paranoid and resorting to raising the element of fear in the country during the elections? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, Sashi, you know, my comments uh, obviously preface, uh, you know, that I prefaced my initial statement on Frank, on, mm. uh, is, uh, you know, is justified. Eh? Um, you know, our party leader is very clear. You know, there's no not going to be any stabbings or bloodshed or murder of any kind. You know, um, you know, uh, you know. We espouse the doctrine of love. Uh, we will honor the results of the elections. Uh, the Fiji First uh, leadership uh, party leadership is losing it. Actually, um, um, you know, the best they can do right now uh, because they're starting to not make sense. Come out and debate us, you know. Come mm -hmm. out and show that you deserve another four years of leadership of this country. Uh, there's still one week to go, um, you know. If I ask thinks he's doing a great job, come and debate the economic heads of each party. Uh, you know, if I, if Frank thinks he's doing a great job, there's I think there's a couple of debates later on this week. Go mm -hmm. out and show your face and debate with the other leaders. So that we can see, the people of Fiji can see who is the right leader to lead this country for the next four years. If they're going to stick their heads in the sand, then it's clear that they don't deserve to be leaders for the next four years. Manoa, I have about 14 or 15 more questions left. I'm looking at the clock. We've got about 20 minutes, I think, or 15 minutes to wrap this up. Thank so you. Uh, let's move on. I mean, talking about Frank, um, you, you say he's lost the plot. Well... Looks like it, because he said he's going to hell the other day. He said, when I make my way to hell, some priests and pastors will follow me. I mean, how crazy is that? Look, uh, another utterance that the Fiji, Le Fiji First Leader Mbani Marama said that he has done more for the people of Fiji than any other prime minister in the country. Now, he made this comments while speaking at his uh, party rally in Nawaka Village. Let me tell you, when Fiji First took over in 2006... The debt level in the country was about $2.8 billion. Now it stands at about $9 or $10 billion, depending who you listen to. Considering the debt crisis in the country, do you think the Prime Minister should be proud of his achievements? Absolutely not, Sashi. I know, um, you know I, I've been on record saying that they uh, mismanaged the economy, they've been spending like wounded bulls. You know, they spent money on things like golf tournaments at one point. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, every single Fijian alive today is now uh, has a debt of about uh, $10,000 uh, of national debt uh, sitting on their heads. Um, just imagine, Sashi, if we have another COVID crisis, yes. what that will do to a small country um, like Fiji. Eh? Um, you know, the... Uh, you know, the, the other thing I think that uh, I'd just like to share to the people of Fiji is this. You know, every government uh, comes in and does basically uh, improves things based on what previous governments have done. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Ratumara, Monasavu, Suvanandi Highway. Uh, you know, what did the Suvanandi Highway do? It opened up the tourism industry for Fiji employment, more taxes. Uh, so every government that came after built on that. Um, so Frank's government, just like previous governments, 
had the benefit of previous government spin. Um, so to, for him to trumpet that he did a great thing, he didn't do a great thing. He leveraged off where other governments had come to. Um, and the, other, the second point I'd like to make, um, government has no money. When Frank is saying, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, he doesn't have any money. The people of Fiji gave him that money. Uh, so, and that is why probably previous prime ministers have never boasted like Frank does, because he probably doesn't know that the government doesn't have any money. Uh, mm. Somebody should educate him on that. That money that government spends comes from the people. So you need you know, to be measured in what you say when you're talking about uh, you, what you've contributed as a prime minister or as a as a party to the nation. Um, you know, each government comes on the back of what other governments have done. The pine industry, again, is another example, Sashi. Who started the pine industry? Not Fiji right. first. The Ratu Seca, Mr. Exactly. Samara. Exactly. exactly. That was his green gold project. That was his exactly. green gold project. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Still talking about uh, the Fiji First uh, Party leader. Uh, the Prime Minister announced they have $1 billion worth of investments in the pipeline, guaranteeing growing employment opportunities for the people. What do you make of this statement? Do you know of this pipeline, or is it yeah. a pipeline in the sky? Actually, Sashi, it's probably only one of the few things I'll agree with uh, the leader of uh, the Fiji First on eh? There are some major potential opportunities for this country. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, this is uh, one of the prospects that excites me about taking over from this government. Um, there are some major uh, opportunities waiting out there. But this government's not the right government to execute them because they think they know everything and they want to do it to take credit for themselves. That is fundamental. Um, it needs new leadership and a new approach to make it happen. Eh? Um, you know, like, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a classic example, Sashi. Um, in 2009, the Fiji Institute of Accountants uh, identified the BPO as a major sector in uh, the Fijian economy. 2009, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Fiji First Government ignored that. Kayum only came awake in 2019, mm -hmm. 10 years later. Uh, so just imagine, Sashi, uh, if the uh, BPO industry had been around for 10 years, we would probably have a major industry already in the country. We all know during COVID, the BPO sector was flourishing. Uh, and, and those who were operating at the time uh, uh, started getting more jobs. Um, and so, you know, you know, there are big opportunities. You know, there's one uh, that, you know, again, I'm not sure why government's dilly-dallying. The second cable into Fiji, is um, a second cable. Eh? We've got the Southern Cross cable coming in. Yes. We need a second cable. What, what does that mean, Sashi? It means that the data costs of running businesses in Fiji will drop significantly. Uh, we will get uh, major players, technological players, start seriously looking at Fiji for manufacturing uh, in the IT space. Why? Because we have two points of entry into Fiji. We become a tier one country when it comes to technology. Yeah. At the moment, a lot of companies don't want to come to us because if something happens to the Southern Cross Cable, we are at the mercy of, uh, of a satellite. Yeah. So, yes. so, you know, these are the fundamental things that need to be unlocked and, uh, you know, uh, and unfortunately, the Fiji First Government, because it's run by one person, just doesn't have the bandwidth in, uh, to do it. Uh, it needs a new leadership. It needs leadership that listens and is able to execute uh, on these ideas. All right. Um, maybe we should just speed up a little bit. I don't know. It's your show. <laughs> you tell me how you're going for time. Because I, as I said, I have about 10 more questions. Yeah. Now, some countries have set up a uh, sovereign wealth fund, etc., to cater for eventualities that may occur. Now, I'm not sure whether Fiji has such a fund. What are your thoughts on this uh, uh, sort of funding? Yeah, for, thank for you for a rainy it's... day. For, for a rainy yeah, day. Yeah. You know, the, um, certainly, you know, one of the things when we 
People's Alliance was developing our manifesto was the question that we all asked ourselves was, from the last 50 years, what can we do different to set ourselves up for the next 50 years? Um, and, uh, you know, obviously the obvious answer is diversify the economy, uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, Sashi. But one of the things that I certainly, when you look at countries around us uh, that have started to develop uh, is uh, the idea of a sovereign wealth fund. Um, and uh, you create a sovereign wealth fund, obviously you need to have uh, budgetary surpluses. Uh, so that's another story, Sashi, uh, to try and get away from the deficits. Uh, but, uh, you know, what that, that does mean is you can start uh, really putting aside uh, funds for a rainy day for your country. So when another major COVID comes, uh, you actually um, have the funds to actually deal with it. Um, you know, I was uh, just this me surmising, you know, that we have something called the water resource tax. Eh? If we started uh, saving, say, 30 million a year, start putting that aside. Uh, you know, there's other areas you can uh, collect uh, funding for sovereign wealth funds from, eh? from uh, royalties, from mines or whatever. But let's just say 30 million from water resource tax, mm -hmm. put it aside. Offshore somewhere uh, so that uh, it doesn't affect our liquidity and that kind of thing. Uh, so if it's sitting offshore um, in a well-managed uh, investment fund, just imagine Sashi over 50 years or out, out of 20 years, uh 25 years how 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 fiji would look at eh? uh and we know you know climate change is coming we know worser cyclones are coming uh we know there'll be another covid uh, and so you know i'm hoping we can actually as a country develop something uh to sort of cushion ourselves against these uh these kind of dislocations eh? yeah all right now let me address the people's alliance and the MOU you have with the National Federation Party. Uh, that alliance has been in place from April of this year when you did the announcement and the signing of the MOU. Seven odd months have elapsed now. The parties are holding joint rallies, etc. How would you describe that relationship today? Thank you, Sashi. Um, um, one word, uh, excellent. Um, you know, we, we've been working together on various issues uh, and initiatives. Uh, some of you saw how me and Richard uh, Naidu interacted on uh, Straight Talk. Um, uh, that is the new Fiji, Sashi. We work together. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, not talk down at each other uh, and not make others feel like they're uh, inferior beings. All right. Manuel, let me know about this next question, whether there are discussions along these lines or not. Now, post-election... The People's Alliance and the National Federation Party will enter into a coalition and form, uh, and from what is being observed in the country, there's every likelihood that this partnership will form the next government in Fiji. Now, if this eventuates, it has already been announced that uh, Mr. Siti Beni Rambuka will be the Prime Minister. Professor Biman Prasad of the National Federation Party will be the Deputy PM. Let me please ask you, who are some of the other people who you have in mind for some of the key portfolios, such as, example, Minister for Finance, Minister for Economy, Minister for Defense, Attorney General's position, etc. Um, yeah. Who are some of these people? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously, Sashi, I have to preface my comments by saying, you know, who gets the portfolios is ultimately the leader's call. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, so I won't answer your question directly, but I'll just share, you know, just paint a picture for the people of Fiji in terms of uh, people that have capacity. Um, sure. So finance, economy, commerce, uh, business uh, area, um, you know, people with finance, business acumen. In People's Alliance, we've got Cecil Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. He's an experienced banker. Uh, we have a gentleman called Israel Emmanuel. He will... He at one stage ran the Asana Holdings, uh, which was like a mirror of Fijian Holdings uh, before it was closed. Uh, there's a guy called Semi Lewere. Uh, he's an experienced investment advisor and um, and also well qualified. Uh, Liliana Pareti is another banker. Uh, uh, she came to fame uh, recently, but uh, yes. you know she's uh, she's you know she is well experienced. 
uh, we've got um, three businessmen uh, in a, in a, in a, uh, artillery. Uh, Mr. Dan Lobendan, uh, Rajesh Prasad from Korvo, Thailand, mm -hmm. and uh, Pritam Shoka. So, you know, we have, you know, quite a rich array of talent. Oh, no, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about myself, of course, uh, Sachi. Mm. But, you yeah. know, we have a rich array of, uh, of talent to choose from. Eh? Um, uh, you know, just imagine, uh, Sashi, I asked to go over the Ministry of Economy with zero experience and zero qualifications. Uh, we have about 200 plus years of professional and practical experience to bring to bear on the people of Fiji. Um, defense, you asked for, um, you know, there's uh, Mr. Nditoka, General Secretary, there's uh, Mr. Silambalawa, um, was a former military uh, uh, um, officer, and of course, uh, you know, our, our leader might uh, want to uh, take that portfolio on. Attorney General uh, Suromi Turanga, uh, very capable, uh, currently uh, has his own practice, but uh, was a former magistrate. Uh, he mm -hmm. came to fame by uh, refusing to uh, to uh, listen to instruction from uh, Frank on uh, the Public Order Act. Uh, mm -hmm. Public Health Act, sorry. Uh, Linda Tambuya, Philip Osorongo, uh, the names uh, that are there, uh, very uh, good practitioners. In health, uh, we've got Dr. Lalam Balam um, uh, there, but uh, you know, you know, in health, uh, you know, there's uh, there's other experienced technocrats that uh, can be used. There, uh, we've got a couple of those that uh, can be used um, in in the health capacity. Uh, we've, got some, we've got some great ladies as well, Sashi. Mary Sane in Balele Wuka, Lavinia Komitotoya, just some of the names that uh, I, I mentioned uh, in addition to uh, to uh, uh, Liliana Pareti. Yeah. What about uh, from your partner, NFP? Yeah, yeah exactly. Have... I mean, like, uh, to, be, to be honest, Sashi, I, I, I should have said that I, I haven't talked about NFP because to be honest, I haven't really been focusing on them, eh? but certainly there's a certain very esteemed doctor on the on the yes. NFC side that we all know of. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, demand brings with him his uh, his experience of economics, um, and so you know, there's a, if anything, um, you know, um, you know the NFP, the People's Alliance NFP collision when it forms. Uh, will certainly have some very capable people uh, uh, ready to serve the country. Eh? So uh, that that is something the whole of Fiji should be excited about and uh, thankful for. All right. Now, as the election battle continues, uh, Manuwa, going into its final stretch, the Fiji First Party have come out saying that Siti Veni Rambuka does not have a track record. Surely this is not the case. How would you respond to such a statement by the Fiji First? Yeah, I mean, um, again, you know, the just desperate to poke holes at anything they can. Eh? Uh, you know, uh, you know, the, our leader has achieved a lot. Eh? Mr. Rumbuka achieved a lot in his tenure as prime minister. Uh, you know, at, in his time, the the economy was good. Uh, he managed an actual the NBF crisis very well. Uh, during his time, um, you know, he created a bad bank and a good bank, and then managed things uh, very well from there. Um, he did things like uh, Sashi empowering the provincial councils, uh, so that the the the, the uh, each province province actually owned their own offices, uh, and that the provincial council rented from those offices. Uh, that was a very good, uh, you know, just a first step towards trying to mainstream Fijians into uh, economic uh, participation. Eh? Um, uh, of course, he supported FHL. Uh, and, you know, the crowning achievement, you know, is, uh, you know, the 1997 constitution eh, that uh, uh, stands out for everyone to see. Eh? Um, no matter what Frank says, um, he, uh, you know, it uh, won't hold any water because, uh, you know, that, um, that uh, constitution was uh, publicly acclaimed eh? and um, and uh, was very good. Yeah. All right. As we head to the home stretch, Manoa, 
Let me invite you to look into your imaginary crystal ball and tell me how many seats do you believe the People's Alliance will win in this election? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. You know, um, you know, uh, you know that um, I try not to be arrogant with these things, because eh? uh, you, at the end of the day, you just never know, Sashi. That's probably the honest way to put it. But uh, you know, we, you know, we're quietly confident uh, uh, that together with the NFP, we will have a, a ruling coalition. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously, we do have a plan to win outright. Uh, as well, Sashi. Um, you know, our target is between 28 to 30 seats. Yeah, but, you know, the, the great mystery with uh, politics and voting, Sashi, at the end of the day, you know, you can think what you think, but <laughs> the voters will decide ultimately what happens, eh? which is the beauty of, uh, you know, of uh, elections. So, uh, you know, we, we are certainly doing our best to, to bring about change uh, to actually ensure that uh, you know, we deliver a, a good government for Fiji. Um, and so certainly, you know, we, we believe just based on what we have seen so far that uh, that is coming. All right. And uh, Manuel, what is your message to the voters in Fiji, as well as those who are ab abroad and who are going to vote? Yeah, thank you, Sashi. You know, the... Um, there's a couple of uh, aspects that I just thought I'd touch on, you know, to when I'm addressing the people of Fiji. Uh, you know, clearly this government has been around for too long. Um, it's uh, 16 years of uh, despotic rule. Um, it's a government that uh, does not feel it's accountable to anyone. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the bulk of Fiji is fed up with this government. Um, on the 14th of uh, December, the government does not have the power. You, the people of Fiji, have the power um, to put in a government that deserves your trust and uh, deserves um, a chance to put right so many wrongs that have happened uh, in this country. Uh, I urge the people of Fiji to all go to the polls um, and vote out this dictatorship. Um, encourage your children, encourage your grandchildren if they can vote. Mm. Uh, encourage your family, your tokatoka, your matangali, uh, your tikina to go vote. Uh, to the young people of Fiji, uh, please exercise your right, right to vote and put in a government that actually respects you and it is transparent and accountable. Uh, you know, the People's Alliance is uh, abolishing tells and bringing back scholarships. Uh, yes. We are trying to create jobs for our young people. We will introduce a national apprenticeship scheme for our youth. Um, uh, we were going to uh, increase funding for uh, medium and small enterprises uh, for our youth. And so I urge the youth of this country, anybody listening today, please go out and vote. The final thing I want to say, Sashi, um, is uh, let's remember um, that 171,000 voters did not vote at the last election. Um, and uh, we need to all go to the polls. We all need to take our children uh, and everybody else with us uh, and do it for our children and for our grandchildren. Uh, we, it is clear that this government does not deserve to be in power. Over the last two weeks, all we've seen is insults. They have not justified why they have to be in power. They have stayed away from debates uh, that would actually give us, give them an opportunity to actually try and put forward an argument why they should be in power. So, to the people of Fiji, uh, this government does not deserve to be around any longer. Uh, and we urge you to go and vote a government that will deserve your trust and your vote. All right. Well said. Uh, two more questions. Very quickly. Um, how can voters access your party's manifesto? 
Yeah, thank you, Sashi. Uh, it's, it's available on uh, online on our website, uh, www.peoplesalliancefiji.com. Um, it's also available on our Facebook page. Um, and certainly, you know, um, there are soft copies around for distribution on request. Uh, so, uh, you know, either one of those is uh, uh, available. Also, a lot of the candidates have had copies of the manifesto. Uh, so um, that, you know, if you know your your uh, representative in your, your area or know of a candidate, please reach out and we'll try and get a manifesto as, as soon as possible to you. Manuel, finally, through you, I would like to extend an invitation to your party leader, Mr. Siti Veni Rambuka, to appear on a special program on SSTP next Sunday, the 11th of December. On, on uh, this program, I will have all the major opposition party leaders and we'll have a brief discussion with them on their campaign. And most importantly, give each opposition party leader an opportunity to deliver their opposition leader's address to the nation in their final appeal to the voters next Sunday. I know that I have uh, received in writing that Mr. Rambuka will be appearing. However, I'd like to ask you a big favor, Kerry Kerry, will you please formally take my invitation on my behalf to your party leader and please make sure that he accepts that invitation. Can you please do that for me? Yeah, sure. Of course, Ashi, you know, the, as you know, um, you know, we, we believe in accountable government and uh, in transparency and making, uh, you know, uh, explaining things to the people. Our leader has certainly uh, availed himself. Um, I will uh, remind him uh, as you requested. Um, and I'm sure he, uh, uh, he will come in uh, uh, account for himself uh, in the way he does, which is uh, excellent. <laughs> All right. And one final plug, your candidate number. Go yes, on. so uh, thank you, Sashi. Um, yeah, my Manuel Kami Camila, uh, candidate 454. Um, um, if you uh, believe in a better Fiji, if you believe in a Fiji that requires new leadership, um, it requires people with integrity, with honesty, and a desire to make a real change, then um, candidate 454, please vote for him. Uh, and we'll uh, make sure we bring back the country and uh, that we thoroughly deserve and uh, has been missing for quite a long time. And uh, one last thing, uh, give my lolomas to somebody who's campaigning with you. My good friend, uh, Soya Peter Wangaita Rewa is with you. I know that. I yes. see his posts every day. So give him our lolomas from, from Sydney. Uh, please do that. Manuel, thank look, a big, a big, big thank you uh, and a big vinaka vaka level to you for making yourself available in episode 47 today. It's been an absolute pleasure listening to your party's program, listening to how you will rejuvenate the economy and things that you've planned with your People's Alliance Party. Thank you for sharing your views so candidately with our viewers today. I wish you and all the candidates and your party leader all the very best in your campaign. And I hope that you are all safe from being FICACT. Um, look forward to seeing your party leader next Sunday. Thank you once again. Nisa Mode and God bless. Thank you, Sashi. Uh, and uh, God bless you too. And uh, again, thank you for uh, allowing me to appear on the show. Vinaka. You better go and catch your flight because we've uh, gone eight minutes past the deadline you set me. Yeah. So, Vinaka, sure. Manua. Vinaka okay. Yeah. Well, then, well, then. Yeah. Bye. And uh, that was the Deputy Party Leader of the People's Alliance, uh, Mr. Manoa Kamikamida. Don't go away yet because waiting in the wings to present his segment is our regular contributor, Nikhil Singh. Nikhil, where is Nikhil? Here, yeah, let's bring Nikhil. Nikhil, my apologies for keeping you waiting for so long. Good afternoon to you. Welcome to episode 47 of SSTP. Thank you, Sashi. Uh, it was uh, really interesting to listen to Mr. Kamikamida. Well, uh, Nikhil, uh, you probably heard right at the beginning, 12,000 plus followers. Great news, isn't that? It is fantastic news, Shashi. Uh, this platform has provided that uh, um, that much needed, uh, I guess, vehicle for people to ensure they are kept um, informed of the happenings in Fiji. Um, so that, that is wonderful news. All right, my friend, let's uh, see what's been making the news headlines this week. Starting from Fiji, of course, 
the Fiji Trades Union Congress has called out the ruling Fiji First Party for its sudden attention to workers. Please tell us more on this, Nick Hill. Sashi, the FTUC leader Felix Anthony says it is ironic that government ministers at the time of elections are now going around workplaces speaking to workers to continue to support their government. Anthony says one wonders what promises are being made. This story was uh, covered by uh, Fiji Village, and I see the Fiji Times leading their front page with uh, with this story as well, Sashi. Um, Anthony says FTUC notes that garment factories are the target for ministerial visits. Um, he says these workers suffered greatly during the pandemic without any assistance from government and bore the crux of the government's declaration that COVID was an act of God. Um, he says yet at election time, these workers suddenly seem to matter. And at the FTUC hosted rally on Thursday last week, Sashi, Felix Anthony said workers' issues can workers' issues can only be addressed if there is a government that is going to be sincere and seriously consider the plight of workers, respect international laws and workers' rights and acts on them. He says workers and their union representatives do not have the freedom of speech these days because when they speak up in this country, they get charged, intimidated, and threatened, Sashi. And uh, in the same token, women's rights activist Shamima Ali has called for the Attorney General's resignation over comments the AG made during a Fiji First Party campaign meeting. These comments were directed towards a Fiji Labour Party candidate. The FLP has called the AG's comments demeaning. More on this, Nikhil. Again, Sashi reported by Fiji Village, while speaking in the Hindustani language, Ayas Sayed Kayum said other political parties like Fiji Labour Party has candidates who are Virginias or Bajan singers. He then asked whether the Virginias have the cap- capabilities to stand in the parliament and speak on complicated issues. This has drawn, this statement has drawn a lot of criticism, Sashi. Shamima Ali told Fiji Village that it is totally unacceptable for a person holding so many portfolios to look down on people. She said the Prime Minister should ask the Attorney General Kayum to resign. Fiji Labour Party leader Mahanda Chaudhary in a report in Fiji Times said the comments by Kayum were demeaning and that Mr Sayyab Kayum has no right to mock a person's religious beliefs and practices. Such as the person in question that uh, Kayum referred, referred to, the uh, the FLP candidate is a university qualified chap um, and uh, as, a, as a side um, contribution to the community, he does sing bhajans um, and uh, that's why Mr. Chaudhary has come out and said that uh, mocking a person's religious beliefs and practices is just not on. Let me just explain uh, what a bhajaniya is. Bhajaniya is uh, a folk singer, a religious singer of uh, Hindu uh, hymns, if you can call it, uh, from our scriptures, the Ramayana and the Gita. So, and these, these people are quite specialized at what they do because they recite the uh, Gita and the Ramayana, the holy scriptures, in song. So that's what a bhajaniya is. Now, Lakhil, last week you mentioned that you will share information that potentially dilutes the independence of the multinational observer group. What have you got for us here? Well, Sashi, I'm, I'm really hoping I'm not poking the Fiji elections office bear, but um, I had reported on this in an earlier episode in which the FLP had said that the MOGs or the Multi Observer uh, Group's terms and re- reference has been provided by the government and not independently framed in accordance with international standards adopted by democratic nations. I've, I've spent a bit of time going through the terms of reference, uh, Sashi, um, and um, in doing so, um, I've seen that one of the directives put on the MLG is that before issuing a media statement and the observation report, the group must seek a response from the Electoral Commission and the Fijian Elections Office. The um, MLG must communicate the findings of the observation to the Electoral Commission and the Fijian Elections Office before making these public. So there is that requirement that before going out um, in the public domain, the uh, observer group must 
um, in fact, report to the Electoral Commission and Fijian Elections Office with their work and what they intend to put out in the public domain. Now, will this lead to any interference in the final product of the MLG? I think that is the question that I picked out, Sashi. Wow. All right. Uh, accountability and transparency comes to mind. We'll keep an eye on that story. Now, a follow-up to our lead story and the editorial we ran last week, the conviction of Suva lawyer Richard Naidu for scandalizing the court following a Facebook post by Richard Naidu. The court action was brought against Naidu by Fiji's Attorney General. Now, the Commonwealth Lawyers Association and the New Zealand Law Society have released statements on this matter as well. What have they said? Uh, this judgment um, continues to attract um, uh, statements from uh, from uh, around the globe, Sashi. The Commonwealth Lawyers Association of the CLA is concerned over the invoking of criminal contempt for scandalizing the, scandalizing the court against Naidu, which has been repealed in many parts of the Commonwealth, as you explained in your very powerful editorial last week. The CLA urges the government of Fiji to respect the freedom of speech and expression and also urges the Attorney General of Fiji to withdraw the charge of contempt against Naidu and to move to quash the uh, conviction. The New Zealand Law Society is also concerned that the court's refusal to allow Mr Naidu to test the evidence against him appears to be in breach of the UN International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and Section 14 of the Constitution of the Republic of Fiji. Both instruments guarantee the right of an accused to examine and challenge the witnesses and present evidence against them. The New Zealand Law Society says such breaches constitute an unfair trial, Sashi. All right. Now, closer to home, Nikhil. It has been a big week for the federal government. Two key election promises fulfilled by the Anthony Albanese Labour government. Uh, what have you got for us on this front? The ABC reported that Labour's centerpiece industrial relations laws, um, known as Secure Jobs Better Pay Bill, have passed the Parliament on Friday after many hours of late night debate. It's a political win for the government, which wanted the bill passed before the end of the year, and it's a fairly substantial set of changes that the government insists will see more money in the pockets of many Australians. Prime Minister Albanese said the reforms were a victory for workers and businesses because it would improve pay and productivity. Such in, in, in another win, the Albanese government has fulfilled one of its key election promises, and that is to establish a national anti-corruption commission. After its, after its legislation passed the House of Representatives on Wednesday last week, Attorney General Mark Griffiths said Wednesday was a historic day and that Labour told Australians if they were elected, they would legislate a national anti-corruption body. That commitment has been delivered in full, Sashi. And uh, staying with federal parliament, uh, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison has become the first former Prime Minister to be censured by parliament. How did this come about? Morrison making um, the headlines all for the wrong reasons. The Guardian reported that Scott Morrison has been censured by the House of Representatives after offering fresh defences for his failure to disclose extra ministerial appointments. This relates to him actually secretly appointing himself to five uh, ministerial um, portfolios at the time of uh, the pandemic, Sashi. The leader of the House, Tony Burke, said Morrison's failure to alert Parliament that he was responsible for five extra portfolios was no small matter, arguing that the path of the previous Parliament was different because they were deceived. The motion passed 86 votes to 50, with the Liberal MP Bridget Archer and the crossbench, except Bob Kedda and Daly joining Labour and the Greens to pass it, Sashi. Well, Nikhil, those are the highlights from Fiji and a couple of good stories from Australia on a national front. Thank you very much. Very nicely presented. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for agreeing to come towards the end of the program because we had to um, allow Manuel Kamikamida to uh, finish his program so that he could catch his flight in time. 
Now, by the way, as you know, next Sunday we meet the five opposition leaders. Then Monday and Tuesday, you and I come back. On Monday, we have with us uh, Mr. Graham Davis of uh, Grubsheet fame, together with Professor Wadden Narsi and your good self. And then on Tuesday, it's going to be the two of us dissecting as we go to the final day before polling. So are you excited about that, Nikhil? It's something to look forward to, Sashi. I can promise viewers that because um, we will have um, a very experienced uh, analyst, if I can call it, um, Professor in, in Professor Wadden Narsi, Graham Davis, he, um, he, he's a person, I, I say, that uh, was right in the middle of all of it um, um, when he was an employee of COVID and, and he knows the workings of, of, of the government. So he'll give his um, uh, angle and, and view on how he thinks this election will pan out. So I think uh, Monday evening will be a really exciting um, episode. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward, forward to it. Um, and um, and likewise on Tuesday when uh, we touch on um, uh, respective sectors and how uh, uh, we believe that things could be improved. Wonderfully said, because I, I'm looking forward to both the shows. Uh, I haven't decided the time, so viewers keep watching for the trailers that I'll put out on the SSTP Facebook page, uh, and you'll get the time. It's going to be either 6 o'clock or 7 p.m. Australian time which is going to be 7 p.m. in Fiji or 8 o'clock in Fiji. If you have preferences, let us know. Nikhil, really looking forward to next weekend and Monday and Tuesday. And perhaps you and I might come back on Thursday for a very short program with an analysis of the final countdown from the election. So that's something that I uh, hope to raise with you as well. Well, no, Sashi, you might have the Prime Minister-elect um, on, on Thursday, but... Um... That's, uh, that's an assignment for you, I guess. <laughs> well, I am looking forward, hopefully, to speak to, if there's a new prime minister in Fiji, um, on the Sunday following. That is going to be the 18th of uh, December. And uh, I think that's going to be a fitting finale to this year's uh, SSTP program before we go on a Christmas break. And uh, I don't know whether you heard or not, I told Mr. Kamikamida today that if they do form government, then uh, SSTP will keep them on their toes because we will follow up and we will certainly be reminding them of the promises they've made to the people of Fiji. And I think that's an important task that we have. Your thoughts? I think, Sashi, one thing that, uh, that you can almost take for granted, if I can say, is that... Uh, um, um, having having seen the political opposition leaders uh, or the opposition leaders um, respond to questions, and you don't ask easy questions, um, you know the viewers, viewers can see that there's uh, this is a program uh, that you hold without fear or favour. Um, I can almost guarantee that uh, if there is a change in government, uh, the main players will always respond to your invites uh, to come on the program, so they can be held accountable. Um, as they have done all this while. Um, I'm not too sure if I can say the same for the um, Fiji First, because uh, based on the several invites you have sent, um, uh, they haven't appeared, let alone I think they have uh, not even acknowledged receipt of your uh, invitations. All right, my friend, uh, something to look forward to. Uh, if there's a new government, I'd uh, like to start a segment called Meet the Minister. Let's find out who the new ministers are for each portfolio. Let's find out what they're made of. Let us uh, uh, push them and uh, let us keep on them because, uh, you know, everyone wants an improvement in the political life of Fiji, in the social life of Fiji. And that is something that uh, you and I will pursue with them at all times. And, uh, you know, it'll be good to meet our new ministers, meet uh, the people who have an intention to bring about a better Fiji. What say you? Absolutely, Sashi. That'll be an exciting sort of uh, program for people to look forward to. A, a lot of commitments have been made, a lot of promises have been made, um, and um, holding people accountable um, is very important when you're in government. So um, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a plan that uh, 
uh, would work out certainly very, very well. Um, and it'll be, I believe, a, a hit with the viewers as well because they would want to know how um, things are tracking and uh, how soon that uh, a new government, if they, we have a new government, will be able to provide the relief to the to the suffering people of Fiji, to those who are under the poverty line and so forth, um, to the school kids, um, to those seeking better health care. Um, so there's a, a, an array of areas that we'll be able to cover with, uh, with the line minister. Wonderfully said, Nikhil. Look forward to your company next week. And as I said on Monday, we will have a panel which, would, which will include uh, Mr. Grubsheet himself, Mr. Graham Davis, a very, very popular blog uh, and Facebook page that has got huge, huge following on Grubsheet. And of course, our esteemed professor, Professor Wadden Narsi, with his analysis on what's happening in Fiji. And uh, that's going to be on Monday, the 12th of December. Then on 13th of December, Tuesday, Nikhil Singh will be joining me in the studio as we'll bring you another program just before voting day begins on the 14th. Nikhil, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful afternoon. And again, thanks for your patience this, this afternoon. Most welcome. Thank you, Sashi. Thank you, Nikhil. Well, you've just been watching Sashi Singh's Talking Point. We ask the question that Fijians all over the world want answers to. As I say, Fijians want to know. That's all for episode 47 for this week. To my SSTP team, thank you for today's episode. And I must also thank you, our viewers, for watching this program and uh, for taking time for your likes, your emojis, and especially those of you who have sent stars this afternoon as well. You are what makes this platform a huge success. Let me just remind you, if you haven't picked it up, next week, in next week's program, episode 48, I will have Mr. Savanatha Narumbe, the leader of the Unity Fiji Party, Mr. William Ngavoka, the leader of Sodelpa, Mr. Mahendra Chaudhry, the leader of the Fiji Labour Party, Professor Biman Prasad, the leader of the National Federation Party, and Mr. Sithiveni Rambuka, the leader of the People's Alliance, all on one platform. You can catch that next Sunday, uh, as usual, on SSTP. It promises to be a big, big program on SSTP. Remember, next Sunday, the 11th of December. And then on Monday, the 12th of December, SSTP will return as Fiji goes into election blackout. Sashi Singh's Talking Point will be back on Monday. And as I just told you, my guests will be Mr. Graham Davis and Professor Wadhanarsi, together with our collaborator, in this program, Nick Hill Singh. And that is something to really look forward to. Then on Tuesday evening, Nick Hill Singh and I will be back to provide a final rundown on the countdown to the elections. Now, in case you have any questions for any one of our five opposition leaders or for my panel of experts on Monday evening, please send them to me uh, via SSTP Messenger. And uh, again, I say in the Interest, uh, interest of transparency. I have time and time again invited the Fiji First Party to be part of this uh, SSTP program. They have chosen not to come, so um, that's their choice. And uh, as I said, I've tried. I hope to see you next Sunday on episode 48 of Sashi Singh's Talking Point at 11 a.m. Sydney time, 12 noon in Fiji, 1 p.m. in New Zealand, and at 4 p.m. on Saturday afternoon in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Don't be late, or you'll need a doctor's note. So until the next uh, episode, I wish you all a very safe and a happy week in closing. I leave you with this quote. And this quote is from former First Lady Michelle Obama, who says, Here's the problem. While some folks are frustrated and tuned out and staying home on election day, trust me, other folks are showing up because democracy continues with or without you. I'll repeat that. Here's the problem. While some folks are frustrated and tuned out and staying home on election day, trust me, other folks are showing up. Democracy continues with or without you. That quote from Michelle Obama, former first lady. Now remember, Fiji, you have power. Your vote has power. Exercise your right to vote. And one final thing I say, on the 14th of December, 
If you are a registered voter, you must exercise your right to vote. That is something that you should do. If you haven't done it the last time around, this time, if you want to make a difference in your own country, then you've got to go and you've got to vote. So make your vote count. We'll have a lot more for you in the next three SSTP programs. Well, that's it for episode 47, another long one. I certainly hope you've enjoyed the program. Till the next program, I am Sashi Singh, bidding you goodbye, namaste, and ni samore. Goodbye, world.